The following local program is a special presentation exclusively for the subscribers of Time Warner Cable. The Law Offices of Young Woolridge. Kern Radio 1410. Real Rock 104. And Jesus Shack present the high school football game of the week exclusively on Time Warner Cable. Good evening, Kern County, and welcome back. It's November 1st, and it's high school football. Time Warner's Game of the Week, Week 9, Game 9. We're up at East High School, where the visiting Patriots of Liberty have come over to the east side to see if they can do some damage and continue their path to their title game. This is Vance Palm alongside my partner in time, Brian Adams. Brian, I have a few questions for you tonight. I've got the cue cards out. East High School, number eight offense with the number one rusher versus the number three defense and the number three ranked team in the county. Your thoughts, first of all, in general? Well, that just leads to a good matchup. Good offense versus a good defense. We're going to see which one can get field position to take advantage of this game tonight. East High School, we know he's with the running back, Matthews. We'll get to him in a while. We've got a ton of information about him. The continued increase in the passing game for East High School, head coach Jim Maples putting it in the air lately. Could that be the key tonight for a big upset? Well, I think a good passing game gives you the balance you need to open up that running game. And with Gupton as a receiver, you have the ability to move him around and get him a matchup against the defensive back that he can exploit. Liberty, tough squad. We saw him against BHS, full package, all the way put together. Could they come into trouble tonight not staying focused? From a former player's mindset, how do you stay focused on these games? Not meaning that East is a slouch. We know they're not, but Liberty's got, they've got things going now. How do they stay focused? What you do is you keep your eye on the prize. You want to go undefeated in your league, and that's what they have to focus on. The only way you go undefeated is get the game at hand tonight. This is a November game, as we mentioned. If East High pulls off the big upset tonight, it will shake things up in the SEYL. Your thoughts from Coach uh, Provencal tonight in the locker room? Uh, Coach Provencal is going to come out and tell his kids, hey, you got to come out focused and ready to play. You can't come out thinking that East High is going to lay on the ground and let you roll over them. you got to come out and hit them in the mouth. That's the words of Brian Adams in this November game we talk about. High school football at its best. It's autumn. There's family, there's friends, and there's football. There's one gentleman that I'm going to bring into the shot now that's very proud to be up here. Hey, Kern County, what a pleasure it is to have the first time on our show, the principal of the main situation here of East High School, Mr. John Gibson. Pleasure to have you here, sir. Thank you for your flexibility. I gave you a call today, and you're ready for the show. Uh, this atmosphere that is a phenomenon Friday nights in America, high school football. If it could be bottled up and sold, tonight's a great night to come with a bottle, right? High school football is a wonderful thing, and we want to welcome uh, Vance and Brian here and Time Warner, and we're just glad to have you folks here, and we're going to see if we can put on a show and shake up the league standings a bit. I like it. Arvin High Bear, BHS Driller, tell us your history, your past, where your origins are from, and uh, coming to Kern County. Give us a little bit of history on uh, you, sir. Okay, I came from uh, Columbus, Ohio, graduated from Ohio State University. Uh, moved west, uh, worked at McFarland for 10 years, uh, Shafter for 12 years, and uh, in the 15th year at East. Every one of them, excellent schools, and proud to be associated with every one of them. And you've been a principal how long here? This is my 11th year. Wow, over a decade. Uh, this is a very historic school. Just in the week that's been building up to this game, I've talked to so many former alums. My father-in-law is a former alum. A lot of great athletes that I know in the city that have so so proud to be from East High School. Uh, can you give us a sense of the history of where it stands in Kern County? It's interesting, the development. Originally, it was scheduled to be a 9-10 school, feeding into the old Kern Union High School District. And Ken Rich, our first principal, uh, fought for that and said, no, we really need a high school on the east side of town. Uh, he was successful in that and created some rivalries with BHS, gave him a little competition in town, and we've grown ever since then. Uh, architecturally, uh, school-wide, traditions, very rich school, our alumni and leaders in, in every capacity in the city of Bakersfield. We're just proud of them all. And location, 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 built up on a beautiful hill. Hey, talk about location. We've got pigskins flying at us. Uh, let's talk a little bit about rivalries. You say rivalries, and, and you know, coming from an Arvin Bear and a Driller, the older schools as those three and Garces. Now all of a sudden, we've got Ridgeview, Liberty, um, all these school, uh, uh, Centennial, all these schools that are being built now. In your decade span as being a principal here, well, how do you feel about the nostalgia of older schools with that rich tradition versus the new exciting schools and the new rivalries being built? Well, it's interesting that three of the four oldest schools that were part of the Kern High School District one time I've been in, so I really don't know much about the new schools, but 
I know the old schools are built better, have deeper, richer traditions, and uh, unfortunately, some of the new schools have some pretty good athletes, and that's been tough for us. We're going to have to we're we're working on that. So. Well, let's talk about the longevity of the attraction of East High School. This is still a very attractive school to students to come to. Some of the pride you have now, present day, and uh, uh, boast a little bit and, and uh, wax eloquence about East High, if you will. Not a problem. We're a two-time California Distinguished School. We're a uh, state Blue Ribbon uh, National nominee for the Blue Ribbon School. We have uh, state model uh, health careers programs and multimedia academies, which produce some of the individuals that are working here with us this evening on your crew. Uh, we have, we're the only school in the district uh, at this point in time that's met our growth standards on the API. Uh, and we're proud of our staff. It's an excellent staff and a rich tradition, great students, and uh, we love our alumni and we love our parents. It's a great, great opportunity. Good for you, sir. But hey, we've got a football game, Brian. Let's talk about football. Your thoughts on tonight's game. Big game for East High. I'm thinking we're going to have to work hard at this one, but yeah, we got some things. Maybe we can pull it off, make it an exciting game, and uh, shake up the standings. If we win this, we got the same shot they do at it. So pretty well comes down to this, and hopefully we'll do well. I'm wishing everybody well and good luck. We hope that nobody gets injured. The voice and thoughts of John Gibson, principal at East High School. Talk about good karma. When I called you this afternoon to be the pregame guest, I had no idea that uh, our director tonight, Zach Flores, and our graphics man, Ray Flores, uh, uh, East High graduates, class of 2000. Quick words for them, sir. I'm proud of what they're accomplishing, and they're uh, a sample of what you can do. If you work hard, they're good kids, and work through the program, and, and we're glad they're in the business, and hopefully they go far. That's the head guy, John Gibson, principal East High, East High School. Thank you for your time. Brian. Right now, your head coach, Jim Maples, in this high school legendary locker room. What are you telling your boys? Oh, you just tell them, hey, nobody's expecting us to win this game but us. We go out here, it's us against the world, and you take on the world. Rich tradition at East High School. We'll cover that as the game unfolds. Will running back Matthews from East High School have a career game and put them in big-time standings with the other schools in this league? This is Vance Palm, Brian Adams. You're watching Week 9, Game 9 of Time Warner's High School Game of the Week. Back in a moment with the kickoff. Don't go anywhere. Some things can't be built in a day. Things like honesty, dedication, good hard work, and integrity. Since 1939, the law offices of Young Woodridge has had one of the strongest personal injury teams in the entire Central Valley. Today, that team is stronger than ever before. Through the years, our attorneys have won some of the highest dollar personal injury verdicts in Kern County. Put our experience to work for you. The law offices of Young Woodridge. Integrity you can trust. KERN News Talk 1410, Bakersfield's hometown news and talk leader. The station you can trust first for breaking news and the most complete local coverage. We are KERN News Talk 1410, bringing you the pulse of the world 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Make an appointment with KERN News Talk 1410, Bakersfield's hometown news and talk leader. The media has become a staple in our everyday lives, whether it's a song, an advertisement, or even a news story. Everywhere you turn, there's a message in one form or another. Do you realize how much media your child is exposed to every day? And everything your child sees and witnesses affects them. It's time to take action and become involved in what messages your child comes in contact with. Filter out the negativity and let these messages be positive. It's up to us to shape their future. Let it be a happy one. County, welcome back. It's week nine, game nine. This is Vance Palm alongside Brian Adams. We're up at East High School. 
Here comes the Blades onto the field. Brian, we had a great pregame show with the principal, and uh, your, uh, your thought and your wisdom and your insight made it even more special. Now we've got a special time. The band, who just performed a stellar rendition of the Star Spangled Banner, are now welcoming their football squad onto the field. So much rich tradition and history. There's head coach Jim Maples talking to the officials. I uh, went to practice on Wednesday. We'll get into some of that as the game goes. But um, as we progress in this show, we're going to talk about the history and the tradition at East High School, talk about the school spirit, all the great things about it. But at the bottom line here, at the end of it all, there's a football game to play, and Liberty is ready for this team we see on the screen, aren't they? Well, they should be. I know that the Hallock Coach Provencal, he's very organized in practice and methodical, and uh, is going to come out and try to get a W. But, you know, you can't underestimate a team that has great speed like East High and they have the ability to make some big plays quick and you know they can get up real quick on this uh, Liberty Patriot team and cause some problems. We have a plethora of information on our board up here tonight for us. We have some stats we'll be showing later on as the green progresses but off the bat as these captains prepare to make their big decisions, we can tell you this, Liberty has a number three defense in the county, number 17 offense in the county. Their quarterback, Fontana, is ranked fifth. Their receiver, Jay Williams, also ranked fifth. Number three rank in Kern County, according to Kevin Eubanks, and number seven ranking in the, uh, the division, Yosemite. So that's Liberty at a glance, and they'll be out on the field. Oh, here they come right here. We're ready for them. East High School. Number one scorer in the county in Matthews. Number one rusher in the county in Matthews. Number eight offense overall. Number three wide receiver in Gupton, as you bring up. So we're looking for um, some big plays by big players, if you will, tonight from East High School and Liberty. I would expect just another strong, solid team effort. Uh, Cole Sorrell, one of our young Woolridge players of the uh, week, two weeks ago. We're expecting big things from him. So let's talk about some specifics here tonight. You know, let, let's talk about... Matthews, and we, we didn't talk about him early in the uh, intro, but we said we have, I mean, a, like you said, a plethora of information on him. I mean, the thing about him is he's strong, explosive, and he's fast. You know, he's able to hit a hole, Vance, and, and get to that outside and make a guy miss or run through a tackle. So he's one of the special backs that we've been privileged to see this year, and it's our first time getting a chance to see him, so I'm really interested after reading so much about him this week. There's talk of Matthews being a little gimpy hobbling a little bit. I had a personal conversation with head coach Jim Maples today on the phone. Absolutely not. He's ready to play, ready to go. So um, I don't look for um, any excuses out of East High School on their side, nor Matthews. And uh, I also look forward to seeing their quarterback in action. This is high school game of the week, week nine, game nine. Time Warner shows it exclusively. Can't wait to get involved in this game tonight. We've got California Adventure tickets to give away. We're just about ready for kickoff. Both teams getting out of the field. Hey, Kern County, get ready for a great game. Looking forward to it. Brian? High school football in November, get a little bit chillier. Everybody's got sweaters on. The hits are a little more stingy in the beginning, yeah? <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, but you couldn't ask for a better night in the first week of November. It's not extremely cold. It's a nice, brisk evening here. And, we, I mean, like you said, you get these hits out here, Vance, they sting a little bit, and the guys just play. Just about ready to go. Kern County, are you ready for this? We're ready. Big time ball game. And I'll give away the secret a little early, Brian. Our halftime guest tonight will be none other. Big time super stud, former East High Blade in his first year at Washington. Nathan Rhodes will be our halftime guest. So as always, Time Warner Cable trying to keep the momentum going. Here's the kickoff. It's up. Not long at all, and it might not stay in bounds. Does it take a decent bounce? It does. East High School will start off in pretty decent uh, field position at the 25-yard line. The ball is taken on the... Uh, Kickoff by number three, Christopher King. So um, not a real big, deep kick to start off. Nothing emphatic from Liberty High. No, you know, and, and they just kicked that. And like you said, gave good field position right now to the uh, East High Blades. But the only key to East High is they cannot afford to turn the ball over. They have to keep possessing that ball and make some big plays tonight. Quarterback for East High School. Number 11, Philip Campus. Compass, I'm going to say Campus tonight. DeAndre Matthews, that's our first look at him right away on the first carry. I really been looking forward to seeing this Matthews kid take the ball and do some things with it. Just underway. Liberty at East. We have whistles, Brian, before the play starts. 
this year in high school football, we've had our fair share of games that have had a lot of calls this year. I haven't been here with you at Time Warner from last year, but um, to me, had some games with a lot of flags. Yeah, and this time of the year where we should see less flags, not more flags. And, and so again, Liberty makes a mistake off the bat and, and gives up five yards. And you want to think of that term uncharacteristically right away, simply because it is for Liberty. We've seen them play already against Bakersfield High School. They're a put together squad. Compass. Hands the ball off to Leonard Matthews, and um, first two carries, not a lot. Actually, the second carry, thrown for a loss. Brian, I talked to Coach Maples when I was here in practice on Wednesday. Head coach Jim Maples, of course, his uh, brother Randy is also a coach, and as you can see here, in talking with him, he's going to have to mix it up a little. Yeah, and you know, anytime you get penetration, I talked about when you had these wing T version of a wing T offense, you're going to do something in the backfield and do some misdirection. You get penetration, it really causes problems for those running plays. Third and four. Campus fakes the play action. He's got time, wings it out to the side. Almost intercepted, incomplete. It was intended out there for. And right here, Campus is rolling out to his right, and he's going to throw the ball. And wow. Good play by Nunez right there, just closing on it. And, and Knocking it down and forcing the punt. Fourth and six, East will punt. You can hear over the loudspeaker possibly the public address announcer echoing or preceding what I'll call. Oh, was it touched? This is the big break that East High might need. What will the referee say? Was it touched by the Liberty player? No signal yet. Okay, it's just going to be Liberty Bowl. I th oh, it is. They've given the ball to East High School. That's what I was waiting for, Brian. There was no signal given by the referee. I thought it hit the Liberty player. The Liberty player back receiving the kick was Scott Wells, the punt. I thought he nicked him. The East High player fell on the ball. Let's take a look, Brian. Wow. And Vance, I was agreeing with you, and we're going to see right here if it does hit him. Wells. And I think it does hit his fingers. We really can't see that good right there, but I think Goodness. he got caught his hands in the cookie jar, tipped his fingers, and, and Art Vargas on top of it. And look at this. East High fumbles the ball. Campus recovers his own fumble. Woo. Exactly what you and I talked about off camera before the game started. East High could certainly use a nice kick start in this ball game. Get up early, make some things happen. Exactly what they needed. Art Vargas on the ball. You know, I mean, anytime you're trying to upset somebody in any sport, you want to get the brakes early and jump on them right here. I'd like to see East High go for the throat and get a touchdown. Campus, six foot, 195 pound junior. We'll talk about East's youth in a moment. Matthews. It's maybe maybe a yard in this front line of Liberty geared up for this Matthews runner, aren't they? Yeah, and, and they're not the number three defense for, for no reason at all, Vance. I mean, they, they play tough against the run. We got a chance to see them against BHS, and, and, you know, they pretty much shut the, the BHS running game down, and it just seemed to get on this track. So I think one of the ways you can do is try to exploit them in the air. Third and nine. Third and nine. Big play early here. Pitch to Matthews. Matthews cuts back up. Again, loses yardage. Matthews. Not able to get things done here early, and I mean early. We're talking about the first two minutes of this ball game, so uh, by no means is this an indication of what to expect. However, and right Liberty there, is tough. Man, sorry, but again, there's, there's penetration deep in the backfield, and I don't care who the back is. You get you get three players of penetration in the backfield, they're going to make a play on you. But I think what, what DeAndre Management to look out for is on his 25th, 26, 27th carries when he really starts putting on some work on people. Fourth and 11, East High goes for it. Campus back, has a man open. Will it be complete? Oh, goodness. Hey, Kern County. Yikes. I don't have a number four in my program. We'll get the call for you in just a moment, Brian. Wow, he just this was a the big play. Wide open right there. Looks like King is his last name. And I'll tell you what, Coach Maple said, we're going to throw everything at him. And that was a beautifully designed play, and doggone it, just bounced off his chest. Yeah, just couldn't uh, just get the execution down, but it was great, great design by the coaching staff. A scare on the Liberty side. They weather it, first and 10 Liberty. Here come the Patriots, Fontana. Drops back right away, and he's hit hard. Thrown down with a big hit. <laughs> well, Kern County, he drops the pass, but he comes back and makes up for it. Yeah, and that's Mike King right there. And, and 
Does a great job of coming off that edge right here. You see clear shot, blind side. <laughs> Sinks Montana for about a 10 yard loss. No matter what age you are, if you're a young player, medium age player, an old guy like me, that's a great example. Something slips through your fingers, a tough play, you come right back and you make another big play. Good job, Mike King. Second and 20 for the Patriots. East High looks sharp here. Paul Sorrell on the pitch. We know this guy. Sorrell gets up to the 47 yard line. Paul Sorrell, our young Woolridge player of the game two weeks ago against Bakersfield High School, immediately shows a cunning resemblance to 14 days ago, doesn't he? Oh, yeah, does. I mean, he just comes running outside. It's like running track right here. There's nobody out there, and you're going to see Cole Sorrell get out here and just go down the alley. Wow. You know, I mean, he gets down the field almost 20 yards before a guy's even able to touch him. Sorrell replacing Andrew Horsberger, a story well documented for the last three weeks. First and 10. Fumble! Montana recovers. That happened right in front of us, Kern County. I got a little uppity. Brings up second and 10. So if you've just joined us, if you're just getting to your couch for a wonderful autumnal experience tonight in your living room for Time Warner High School football, East High School takes the ball on the kick. Doesn't get much happening. Punts it. It deflects the receipt, the return man for Liberty. Fumbles it. East High gets it on a fourth and 10. They try to get in on a reverse pass. They drop it. Now, Patriots trying to march down the field, second and 12. Fontana throws the ball out to Nunez. Nunez slips the tackle, gets across the 50 yard line. He's up to the 41 yard line at East High School. Nunez slips the tackle, Brian, and 10 yards later, that hurts. Well, I think one thing is that, you know, that Coach Provencal has this Liberty offense is the luxury to, to be able to go to Nunez and Jay Williams and split them on each opposite side. You see Nunez right there catching hits, and he's a big, strong kid, throws a guy off of him, picks up a first down. And that creates that balance, so you just can't go and say, we're going to stop Cole Sorrell because then Jay Williams and Nunez will beat you. First and 10 Patriots. Big offensive line for the Patriots, opening up holes like this. And here comes Cole Sorrell doing the rest. A nice move here and there, and just like that, they're at the 22-yard line. So East High had their chances early here in the first three minutes of the quarter. Weren't able to capitalize, ran some nice plays. But in a matter of one or two minutes, our man Cole Sorrell from two weeks ago is marching back down the field. Yeah, that's just Cole Sorrell going off tackle to the right. I mean, he's just, again, down the field 10 yards before anybody's able to hit him. And, you know, when you're running like that, you can pick up a lot of yards. Fontana behind center. Hard can't, doesn't get anybody. Fontana rolls left, throws across his body. Incomplete. Intended out there for Jay Williams, one of the leading receivers in the county. There's head coach Jim Maples from East pondering what might have been early on, letting that slip past him and concentrating on a big defensive front here in field goal territory already, but they'd like to hold him. I think that's what you have to do right now, just say, hey, we're going to shut them out and give them no more than three. We don't give up the big seven. You know, we're only down three, not that we get the ball back, or, you know, even a field goal, it could be, it could be missed from this distance or blocked. Second and ten in motion. Jay Williams. Fontana takes the snap. Keeps it. Makes one heavy, heavy move, and it's six points. Liberty High School. Penalty flag. After the touchdown. It's probably going to be a, some kind of unsportsmanlike conduct, too. That's unfortunate, isn't it? Well, Fontana in our game against Bakersfield High School here was the steady, consistent athlete that moved his high school team down the field. Tonight, he's already a playmaker. And uh, as we'll see in our... So right here, he's gonna do an option down the line. He takes it up, there's a good move of dipping in right wow. there on the secondary player. And just basically just breaks his ankles off and goes into the end zone. And you get a penalty later because of an unsportsmanlike conduct, and that just moves you back. 15 yards on the uh, extra point attempt, which could make a difference if you miss it. So it's 6 nothing, 6-18 left in the first quarter. Thank you for joining us. High School Football Game of the Week with Time Warner Cable. Started off with a bang. The field was zigzagged by both teams on a punt. Uh, first of all, a kickoff and then a punt and then a missed punt reception and then a series of plays by East High School, almost got in the end zone, and then Patriots marched down the field, scored a TD, and now a long extra point due to 
a little bit of business in the end zone. Here's the kick, it's up and it's not going to make it. You just never know about things like this, don't you? So there's an example of a little bit of extracurricular activity after a touchdown that unfortunately just puts a blemish on a great drive. Yeah, it does. You know, and, and that drive is, is what, when you try to win a championship, that's what championships teams do. Boom, boom, they boom. make a mistake, defense covers, then they put it on you offensively and come down and score. But like you said, a big mistake, been an unsportsmanlike conduct. Now you move back 15 yards, miss an extra point, and the game is close, could make a difference. And we've seen some extra points missed early in the season that cost the game. Kern County, we're up on the hill at East High. We had the principal in our pregame show, and he's a well-known and well-liked gentleman. The uh, crew found out about it at Time Warner Cable that he was coming in, and boy, they were excited. Couldn't speak uh, more highly about their principal and their leader. And uh, here comes Fontana again with that great move. That's that's a that's a it's pretty serious juke, huh? Yeah, and, and the penalty is way back here. You know, well well away from the play where they threw it from. So. Unfortunately, if your coach Proven saw that, that penalty cost you a, a point, it could be a very crucial point if it's a close game. So the East High School Blades line up again for another kickoff reception. The first one, they got back to about the 26 yard line. Couldn't get clicking on O. We hope they will, we know they will. Long punt they made and uh, almost capitalized on that first series. Here comes Andrew McAtee kick the ball off and deep for the Blades, Gupton and Matthews, two of their big offensive powerhouse. Naraho takes the ball, gets a nice move and uh, power runner gets up to about the 32 yard line. So um, let's see if Eastside can get some things going here. Wouldn't surprise me if Maples goes to the air on first and 10, you never know. You know, he's gonna have to do something, you know, in the, in the passing game to alleviate some pressure for Matthews. And right here, we're just gonna see a replay to kick off Filled it by one of the up backs. Does a good job of covering the ball with two hands. Young kids, if you're watching, and right here, picks up some good yardage. And that's David Naranjo. And he goes to the 31-yard line. Once again, East is in good field position. First and 10. Up the middle to Matthews. Kind of lost his footing on this field. and Maybe gets a yard. Maybe some of these high school students are going to be calling in to find out if they can win some California Adventureland tickets. We'll talk about that later. What a cool company, Time Warner, always making things happen. Second and nine, Matthews picked up a yard. Quarterback for the Blades campus. Hands the ball to Matthews. Oh, goodness. Kern County, you saw a great run, but you also saw some stick to on the defense. Fumble recovered by Mike Letourneau. So we almost saw a breakaway, and instead, it's going the other way for Liberty. Ouch. And you can, Brian Maples had the right idea. Yeah, and that's what you do. You stick with the kid. I mean, he says second lead rusher of state right here, just has the ball in the right arm and stripped out of there. Wow, great play by Ricky Henderson. By Ricky Henderson, we saw had a, a, a huge game against BHS, and then Mike Latorno comes in and, and recovers it and puts that ball back into the Liberty offense. So all of you viewers out there on Time Warner Cable, you get to see this Liberty offense at its best early. Big power drives and then big plays on defense. They have the ball at East High, 48 yard line. We're in the first quarter, 542 left. Patriots want to get in again already. Cole Sorrell, ball handed off the middle. Met quickly by the East High School defensive line and they keep him there. Yeah, and you know what's funny is on first down, that East High defense is really tough. They got a couple of sacks for loss. Yeah, they got to figure out what to do on second and third down. But you know, sometimes coaches when they get this kind of field position advance look to go deep early when they get a turnover like that. East High School defense gaining experience every single game, and that's a subject we'll talk to you about right after this play. Second and 12. In motion, Scott Wells, Fontana. Drops one back. Look at this, Kern County. There'll be a touchdown pass to Richard Ball, but there is a flag on the play. Now the question is going to be, Vance, whether it's offensive or defensive, because you kind of saw a push off with the left hand on the receiver. Well, so. the same ref that threw the flag also gave the touchdown sign, so it's if he mentally decided to go ahead and let everybody know it's a touchdown, and I think it is. Well, the referee pointed in the wrong direction, but what he meant was interference 
and we can't see the, the, the contact right there, but good catch. Wow, he got in. That's Richard, Richard Ball. Ball. And, you know, I just jumped on him early, and it's already 13, 12, nothing. Got a timeout. Strangely enough, oddly enough, I should say, by Liberty, they've uh, decided to call a timeout. The whole squad's going over to the sidelines. Uh, your guess on this? Uh, they either didn't have enough men in the field or they were just unorganized and deciding whether they want to go for two and get the points back or kick a PAT. So we had a little shot there earlier of head coach Jim Maples, who has to be uh, kind of frustrated. Had a couple opportunities here that just uh, some tough luck. It's gone the other way very quickly. It's 12 nothing Liberty, and uh, there's Coach Thorpe. Maybe telling these guys exactly that. Hey, guys, we're playing well. We've had a couple, uh, couple of things not go our way here early, and that's absolutely no reason to get down, and uh, you're better than that. And uh, talk, uh, talking about the East High School guys, by the way, Kern County, that's the hottest number in town. You know that, 322-1941 for copy tonight's game. Brian, we were talking to uh, Coach Thorpe at practice on Wednesday, and he talked about the youth of this defense of East High and along with youth, youth goes the same term inexperience they happen to go hand in hand and he says we're going to grow we're getting better every game obviously the next couple of years we look for our team to be a, a really strong team but you got what six sophomores on their starting defense um, against a team like Liberty certainly going to be a factor in the equation yeah and they're exactly right as the season progresses they're going to get better and learn how to play at this level possibly another reason they had a timeout they thought it over and said let's go for two Montana Rolls back, has a man open, and it's a two-point conversion. It's good with Cole Sorrell grabbing it in. So possibly what they thought about. Brought him to the sidelines, decided to run a play to get the score back to 14-0, where they expected it to be after their first touchdown. So that's the score, 14-0 early. Liberty up on East High School. Nice pass. You know, that's the situation right there where Fontana really makes Cole Sorrell open. He's basically covered. He tosses it back. We're only his receiver can get a chance to make the play. Cole makes it. And you know, right now we're seeing a dynamic game out of Fontana off the bat. Dominic Fontana, 5'10", 160-pounder. Fontana making his own name in Kern County this season. Number five ranked quarterback. You look at his personal statistics. Fontana 76 out of 147 for 1,111 yards and 11 TDs. So. That's before going into this ball game. Now he's got 12 TDs, one of them running in. So he'll move up the ranks. Talented squad out there at Liberty, aren't they? Oh yeah, they are. And you know, you don't you don't go six and two, three and zero in the league so far if you're not talented. So they're doing a good job of, of using their talent to their fullest advantage. And right now, the East High is to settle down, man, because it's a lot of the game to play yet, and they have game breakers who can get them back in the game. On that note, we were privy to nearly a game breaker on the last series they were running, which would have knotted it up or possibly put them ahead with a strip just like that. It's 14 nothing. There's a kickoff, another possible big run here, and Gupton uh, gets up to the 31-yard uh, line. So they start every series these time in decent field territory. And uh, let's see if they keep a, a spring in their step and they keep their... Um, you know, their attitude um, up. Right there, Gupton does a good job of getting in behind that wedge and getting to about 31-yard line. And like you said, Vance, I mean, that 31-yard line, you got a good possibility of going down and scoring when you only have to go 70 yards. There's some conversation on the field right now with the officials in, looks like the uh, secondary of Liberty. First and 10, East High School. 4.51 left in this first quarter. You're watching Time Warner's High School Game of the Week exclusively on Time Warner. Ball goes up the middle. Andre Matthews. Andre Matthews is five foot eight, 180 pounds. He's a junior. We're going to get a chance to watch him again next year in Kern County. Yeah, and Coach Mabel's talking about here being one of the strongest guys on the team. So, and Brian, you brought up an interesting point about the longevity of Jim Maples and the seniority he has in this league. We'll get to that point <laughs> in just a moment. Second and seven for the Blades. Campus behind center. Hands the ball to Matthews. Matthews squashed. Nothing. Going back to that thought we had earlier before the game about head coach Jim Maples. Yeah, I mean, he, he's the dean of the coaches in, in the South uh, East Yosemite League. He has two years of, of varsity experience. The other coaches are all newcomers, so... 
he's the, he's the guy that's on top right now. In a lot of ways, the positive of high school sports is continuing to build coaches and letting them get their chops, if you will. Third and six. Uh-oh. Mike King wrapped up quickly and quite heavily. Nothing, and uh, the Blades will punt the ball. So um, Liberty, in every way, shape, and form, making their presence known quickly here. Yeah, the only mistake we've seen Liberty do is, is just mishandle a punt, but other than that, they've been just stellar so far. Here's the punt. It's up, not a bad punt. Scott Wells calls fair catch, and it gets a nice East High School bounce, and um, they're getting their breaks, but they're taking them on both sides. <laughs> Good and bad breaks. Yeah, and they just haven't been able to take advantage of the breaks they have got. And so far, I mean, that's just the story of the first quarter so far. They had a good chance to, to put some on the board and weren't able to, and then Liberty marches down, Vance, and then they get the ball up, and Liberty in two plays goes downtown deep to score. So it's just one team taking advantage of the other team not. But there's school spirit, Brian. First and 10, Liberty wants to head up the field north against East. Fontana, three steps. Gets the ball out. John Nunez, Nunez wrapped up. Very nicely, great tackle. Out there by Amidi Irie. Irie. Yeah, that, you're right, man. That's a great job of going one-on-one -on -one in open field. That's one of the hardest things to do in football is tackle in an open space one-on-one. -on -one. I'll bring up second and six. Big offensive line for Liberty High. Cole Sorrell. Big hit up there early. <laughs> Jeff Smith laid one on. I thought it was, yeah, it is 51, Jeff Smith. Nice hit. You see right there, they hit him in the backfield. Cole Sorrell still has enough strength to, to move forward for about a yard or so, but. Brings up at 36, Brian. Yeah, it does. And, you know, East High plays a tight defense. You know, they're going to try to cover you man-to-man -man for a lot of plays and blitz. So if Liberty can handle the blitz, going to be up to try to get the ball downfield. And if not, they're going to get some sacks tonight for East High plays defense. Well, head coach Maples. Got the kitchen sink in his back pocket, maybe. We'll see it later. It looks like third and four. Scoreboard says third and six. Let's cut it to five. Hand off to Cole Sorrell. Cole Sorrell stalled, does not get the first down, and that's a big stop for East High School. If Liberty decides to punt, you never know with this squad. Yeah, you know, that's exactly what uh, that defense needed on the third down was to make that stop and to hopefully force a punt right here. So it's going to go on a little draw play delay. Nothing there. Ball's on the ground. It wasn't ruled a fumble, and there they go. Liberty runs on the field quickly, gets set up quickly, snaps it quickly. Here's the punt. There's a flag already on the play before the ball even hits the ground. It takes an incredibly nice Liberty bounce, and it'll be down about uh, the 22, 23 yard line. But there is laundry, and it was thrown by the back judge way back by the receiving team. So let's see what it could be, Brian. Maybe too many men. Let's see, one, two. Could be a head count problem, huh? Yep. Too many men on the field. Ball well, right at about the 24. Yeah, Vance, that's what it was. It's too many men on the field right there. So that's probably going to put that, that Liberty offense back on the on the uh, field again. Oh, boy. Well, it's one thing to get some bad breaks. It's another to have a mental lapse and uh, have execution become part of the problem. Yeah, that hurts. And that's too bad, too, because that defense, this young defense we're talking about, did an excellent job on going three and out and forcing the punt. Ball resting at the 49-yard line. Well, Kern County, it's first and 10 Liberty at the halfway point. If there was ever a team that probably on paper in, in real life didn't need a lot of favors, it was Liberty, but they got one there, first and 10. Montana, seven drop, nine drop, wow for that very reason. Nice screen play, big block out there. 
And uh, looks like it may be. Could be an illegal block by Liberty. We'll find out. Could be holding also on a screen play. Let's yeah. find out, Brian. I think it was going to call for it. He had too many men downfield. And he also receives downfield. And that's back. exactly what it is. They had linemen down to, at the first down marker, and the ball was thrown past the first down, uh, past the line of scrimmage. So you'll see right here, the ball's going to be caught on the left side of the line of scrimmage. And you'll see men down here blocking the linemen. 55, 71, and that's just well, too far. Big Adam Heron, number 71, laid somebody out, but he might have been there too early to do it. You know, and that's not necessarily their fault because one thing, the receiver can't drift that far. He has to stay in that backfield and catch the ball in the backfield. So it's just not the lineman's fault. They were doing what they're supposed to do. They got out there. Very good, Brian. Keep me in check or I'll get some lineman's dad coming up to me saying, hey, buddy, that wasn't my kid. Good thing I know Adam Heron's pop. Oh, great play by the East High School defense. Fontana threw what I call a miniature reverse to number 40. Ken Berman, and uh, he's wrapped up quickly. This is what East High always needs to do tonight. Yeah, that's wow. a, yeah, that's just great penetration right there. We're seeing both teams get a lot of penetration on the linemen that you see Colin Clark come across. And so anytime you try to do some misdirection and, and trap like that and pull people, you get that penetration, there's going to be problems in the backfield. Well, we got a timeout on the field. You're watching Time Warner's High School Football Game of the Week. 14-0 is the score. Liberty leads East High School. It's been a very good ball game. There's been a lot of action. There's been some big plays, and there's been uh, decisions, execution problems, and uh, that gives us our score. East High School, we've seen kind of a yin and yang there, positives and negatives, all wrapped up in that. In one quarter, I mean, they did everything but put some points on the board. They had turnovers. Some things can't be built in a day. Things like honesty, dedication, good hard work, and integrity. Since 1939, the law offices of Young Woodridge has had one of the strongest personal injury teams in the entire Central Valley. Today, that team is stronger than ever before. Through the years, our attorneys have won some of the highest dollar personal injury verdicts in Kern County. Put our experience to work for you. The law offices of Young Woodridge. Integrity you can trust. KERN News Talk 1410, Bakersfield's hometown news and talk leader. The station you can trust first for breaking news and the most complete local coverage. We are KERN News Talk 1410, bringing you the pulse of the world, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Make an appointment with KERN News Talk 1410, Bakersfield's hometown news and talk leader. Welcome back, Kern County, November 1st, 2002. We're drifting into some cooler weather. Tough guy Brian, William, uh, Brian Adams here, my big uh, football partner, T-shirt only. I'm a hoopster, man. It's cold. Second and 15 for the Patriots. Fontana rolls left, throws across the body, incomplete. Fon intended out there for Wells. Fontana, obviously, as we know, has a nice arm. But no conversion there for a first down. It's uh, fourth and 15. East High School, another opportunity to kind of get the moment, get Mr. Mo on their side again, huh? Yeah, and you know, once again, the defense comes right back out, Vance, and goes, gets the three downs and out, and gives the ball back to Matthews, Compass, and uh, Gupton and company. There's a punt, another end over end. Look out, dangerous roll here. Could be crazy. It's touchdown by Liberty. Rory Gonzalez gets down there. It's going to be uh, East High School on their own 15-yard line. They've got about 85 yards to go to get something on the scoreboard. Just underway here in the second quarter. Halftime guest, Nathan Rhodes. Brian, you had a chance to watch him last year, and he's a, a big kid up at Washington. We're going to get the full scoop on uh, what's happening with him. An injury, he's home. We're for fortunate to have him. Coach Maples uh, from East High School lined it up, and we'll get to talk to the big fella. Yeah, and he was a dominating blocker when he when I got a chance to watch him play the last few years. Here comes East. 
campus. Throws the ball out to Art Vargas. Art Vargas picks up about five, six yards. Not a bad play. I like that. No, I like that too. You use Matthews as, as your uh, as you fake the ball to, then you come out and you run a little option. That's a, a great call. We'll get the official yardage here. Looks like about look about three or four yards. It's nice. So second and three officially. East High School trailing by 14. The ball goes to Matthews. Matthews, well-documented young athlete. He'll be here next year. We'll get a chance to watch him next year. But as far as this year is concerned, early on, Brian, he racked up some stellar numbers uh, with the passing game starting to be incorporated into Maple's offense. Um, individual records, like the all-time leading record, might not be attainable any longer, but doesn't do anything to blemish this kid's performance this year. No, it doesn't take anything away from him. You know, and that's one of the things that happens. You have to go after him. Big third and one, Brian. Ball goes to Matthews. Matthews gets through that nice hole that was opened up, and uh, let's give kudos where it's deserved by this offensive line. You know, guy doesn't rack up the yards without the line up there with him. No, you know, and that, that's on on, on uh, any uh, level. Right here, we're going to see a run to Matthews right off tackle. It comes in, and it does a good job of going north and south and picking up that first down. First and ten, East High School. Need to get some things going long term here. Matthews loses a yard. You know, okay. Vance, I mean, that's one of the things that's gonna, that's gonna happen right there. Is uh, he's gonna get that ball 25, 30 times a game, so he's gonna get his touches. I just think Philly has to get a way to get Gupton in the game from that receiver spot because, you know, a few weeks ago he had a 200 yard game. Players running off the field for Liberty. Did they get off in time? Apparently so. Campus rolls right, has options, keeps it himself. Keeps the ball and gets a nice gain. A first down, East High School. And here we go, step by step, play by play. That's you know, Coach Maples starting to feel a tempo being built up here. Yeah, and that's how you get back in the game. You don't have to strike right away. You just stay in. There's a lot of men left. You keep running that option play. Keep banging the ball to Matthews. And right here, Campbell says, this time I'm going to keep it myself, pick up the first down, and let's get back to that line of scrimmage. East High ran off a string of three wins. To put them at two and one in league. Ball goes up the middle. Nothing doing. Late flag on the play. Looks like maybe a bit of a ruckus here right in front of the referee, and um, neither team needs it. Who will it be against? Ref emphatic about this call. I can tell you which team can afford it. Who can afford it, though? Uh oh. And that wasn't a team that can afford it, in my opinion. Uh, well, no dramatic overreaction by the coaching staff on East High School. It's probably the last thing they need is start getting upset and getting on these guys because they're building up some momentum. But that's how you can lose it, isn't it, Brian? Yeah, it is. And, you know, and right there, you're talking about you're playing against the number three defense in the county. You don't want to have to go second down and 30. Got no sign of it there. So it's second and awfully long. Campus tosses one up there, floats it out of the no man's land. Smart, safe play, but he took a big, big lick in there. Wow. Big hit by James Bashan. We saw a lot of Bashan against Bakersfield High School, and he did some more bashing there. Campus can't take a lot of those hits. He looks right like he's uh, feeling it. Play action to Matthews. They're going to try to get up, get the ball downfield, and just good coverage downfield, and good hit by Bashan. Third in a very long way. Third and 25, the official call. You're watching East High School against Liberty's defense. Campus drops back, lets one air out, and I mean it's aired out. A collective awe by the company crowd here. Gupton was the intended receiver, and that was up there a long time. But you know, I, I like that pass play to him because it gives Gupton a chance to make a play and see if he can pull off a miraculous catch. You see right here, got position. Being guarded by Ricky could, Henderson. And, and Ricky Henderson got his arm in there and did a good job of knocking it away. And Gupton almost made a huge play. So the Blades will punt. Fourth and awfully long, deep for the Patriots. Scott Wells, Scott Wells mishandled the first punt of the game, which resulted in East High taking over deep in the Patriots territory. They didn't score, and now here comes Scott Wells. Looks like he wants to return it. He fumbles another one. Scott Wells having trouble handling the rock tonight. Fortunately, scoops that one up, but uh, could be the cool air drifting in or 
would be Scott Wells thinking about touchdown runs before he's got it in his glove. Yeah, we'll see right here. Just Ooh. just mishandles it. You know, there's not much to it. He does a good job of covering it, though, and not giving up another turnover to the Blades. First and ten, Liberty. Heading south now in the second quarter. 8.38 left in the half. They're leading 14-0, two impressive drives by uh, what I can best describe as a uh, machine-like offense. Fontana behind center. Fontana across the middle. Complete to Jay Williams. Jay Williams picks up the first down on the first play. Yeah, that's just a nice slant play right there. You like Williams, don't you? Yeah, he, he's just a smooth athlete, big target, and he catches the ball with his hands, which I, what I like is he does. Not a body catcher. And then put up the first down and keeps those chains moving. Body catcher, obviously, an athlete who would prefer to maybe try to surround it with his chest yeah. rather than go out there and snag it. And there are times that you want a body catch when you're in traffic, but the problem with that is that ball comes in and attacks those pads and bounces off. First and ten, again, Montana. The ball to Cole Sorrell. Cole Sorrell makes one move, and we've seen this before. Cole Sorrell makes one or two moves with already a pretty decent head of steam going, and that's all it takes for about a 13, 14-yard game. Yeah, what I like about Cole Sorrell's running style, man, is he's always moving forward when he makes his move. He dips you out while he's moving forward. We'll see right here. Stays in, falls that line. But see, he's always going forward. His feet are always going forward. He has good balance. He's able to just drag people to those extra yards because of his strength. Cole Sorrell could be a front runner in this year's 2002 Young Woolridge performance of the season. We'll talk about that later on. Fontana drops back. Finds his main man tonight, Jay Williams. And Williams, another 20-yard play, first and 10 again. Yeah, you know, and right there, man, you watch Jay. I mean, he's just so smooth. It's not like he's doing much, but he kind of dips the guy out and makes him miss, and he's another 20 yards. Right here, Fontana's just throwing some strikes right now. You see Jay Williams getting in. Just watch how smooth he is with his moves. There's not a lot of wasted energy. Ducks it up, makes another guy almost miss, and like you said, Vance is 20 yards down the field again. East High School defense next year and the year after will look back on games like this as testing times and uh, as I say it could be another tough test unless it was the offensive line. It looked like a hard count by Fontana made him jump but it might be and I think it is yeah. against the line for Liberty. They called against East High, but well, I thought I, I, Nunez got away with one right there. The receiver, he took off. He was five yards downfield. Well, let's watch. Our Time Warner crew, as always, giving us the good look. Looks like a hard count. I didn't see anything there, so. Um, yeah, I mean, he, you see on the far end, but Nunez, the receiver, and for him to get that far off screen, Nunez was, was moving well before that, and I think East High just got the raw end of that deal. First and five. Ball goes to Cole Sorrell. Sorrell. Patiently waits for some room. Gets probably four or five yards on the play. Six and a half left in this first half. East High School hanging in there. You know, and, and they are. You know, if, if you'd ask, you know, Coach Maples, if you'd be down 14 nothing with, with turnovers and not taking advantage, I mean, you have to say you'd be happy because we know that, that Liberty has potential to score a lot of points. They admitted in the ball game they had the ball on the Liberty, uh, what, 12, 13 yard line. Second and four, looks like a pass play. Looks like it is a pass play. Fontana throws the ball out to the corner. Intended for Jay Williams. Defended well out there. And it was a, a scary play because it almost still ended up as a touchdown. Yeah, we'll see right here. Gutman has good position. The ball's a little underthrown by Fontana. It looks like he has an interception for a second. Then it looks like, looks like Jay has a touchdown and Gutman stays with the play. And doesn't quit and knocks it out on Jay's way down on the ground. If you're a Liberty fan at home, you're probably going, ugh, almost had it. Well, if you're an East High fan, you're thinking, woo. <laughs> and I go to the same play if Gupton's going to line up like that against Jay Williams. Split left, Gupton against Williams. What a matchup. Fontana hands the ball off to number 40, Ken Berman. Touchdown. Hey, Brian, Liberty Patriots, machine or 
enthusiastic, well-coached team, or both? <laughs> uh, I think it's a little bit of everything. Well-coached, they, they follow assignments, and there's some good athletes. I mean, we were talking about Sorrell and everybody else, and now... BAT. Berman comes through on, on the die play, and nobody was guarding him. 21-nothing's a score. Liberty, we've got a stop clock here, laundry on the field. There is a flag, so we'll have to find out what the call is. After the PAT, the kick was good, but we'll find out uh, what, the, what the call is. It's 21-0 on the scoreboard. It's against East High School. It was it after the play? Yeah, they're calling a personal foul, so that should be uh, tacked on the kickoff. Ouch. It's declined. The PAT is good, so might not see it on the kickoff, yeah. but uh, it gives a signal that possibly nerves are being frayed out there in the trenches for East High School. Hope not. Yeah, I, I hope not, too. I hope they keep the composure. You know, in this remember, there's a lot of game left. I know it's the third leading uh, defense in the county, but you have weapons that can put points on the board. It's just a matter of getting, getting to it and getting to a rhythm, as you said, on that little penalty. It sets the rhythm off. So, you know, again, six minutes left put together a good drive and, and, and get back in the game. Hey, Time Warner Cable viewers, subscribers, the faithful out there, you're probably wondering, Vance, when are you going to give us the answer to the California Adventureland giveaway? Because I'll be waiting for the question at halftime. Well, tonight's answer for two tickets to California Adventureland, the answer for tonight is none other than Time Warner Cable. Now that's an answer that's not easily forgettable. Time Warner Cable. A multitude of possibilities for a question, my friend. A multitude. What will it be? But the answer is Time Warner Cable. That's Disney's California Adventure tickets to be given away at halftime. At halftime. There's already been, what, two winners so far now this year? Two weeks we've been doing this. Time Warner Cable phones are being hounded by our Faithful viewers that want to get Disney's California Adventure tickets. The answer, Time Warner Cable. What will the question be? That's at halftime. 6.13 left until halftime. And our guest will be none other than Nathan Rhodes, East High alum, big time lineman, up in the great state of Washington right now. We'll get his insight to college life. A little bit different locker rooms, aren't there, Brian? Going from high school to the Pac-10. Yeah. A little nicer, a little bigger. Oh boy, here we go. Brian's but more pressure. <laughs> Here's a kickoff. Liberty leads by three touchdowns. Gupton has the ball, looks up middle. Gupton shaking, moving. Couldn't he get outside? He's got his speed. Liberty trying to contain him. They do, and he's wrestled out of bounds by John Nunez. So Gupton again gets them in good field position. Something East High School has been having all game long. Let's see if we can put some points on the board here for East High School. You see Gupton does a good job of getting in behind that wedge as we saw last week the North High team break a big one. And Gupton comes out with a, a big one of his own right here, giving this team excellent field positions. He goes off to the right. And Nunez does a good job being that safety valve to stay there and make sure he doesn't go for that big long run. We're at the six minute mark in this first half. East High School, broken play fumble. Campus recovers his own fumble, loses a down. It'll be second and 10. Brian for East High School, eighth ranked offense, number one ranked rusher, number one scorer in Matthews. And when we talk about the number one scorer in the county, we can extend that to the number eight scorer in the entire state of California. When you talk about the entire state, all scorers, you're talking about all the receivers, all the running backs, all the kickers, Matthews number eight in the great state of California. Second and 10, I'll hear your thoughts on that. Got whistles, have laundry. We'll find out that idea, what that is in a moment. Your thoughts on Matthews being number eight in the state in scoring. I mean, that's a tremendous feat any time. I mean, you're in the top 10 in the state of California, which is one of the top football states in the nation. You know, you're talking about Texas, California, and Florida, the top three football states in the nation, and to be the top 10 number eight, I mean, that's just a, a, a huge accomplishment, especially being a junior. As our Time Warner graphics crew, alumni of East telling us a dangerous blade. I agree. 518, 517, 516, the clock's ticking here. 
late in the first half. East High School, second and 15. King is now the quarterback for the Blades. King rolls left, keeps the ball himself. Breaks one up the open, looking for some open space. Met hard and heavy, but it's a nice run. Ricky Henderson pops him hard, but King gets up and as importantly as hopping back up is what he did before, and that's move the ball. Yeah, King gives you a little more quick, a little speed right here. He's gonna cut back, but Henderson says, I'm gonna put a lick on you right there. Just good form, tackle chest to chest, and puts him down short of the first down. Third and one, King pitches it out. I don't know if he'll get the first down. Very close call where that referee is standing. It could be inches. I tell you, they inches. Get a, if, they get a good, if they get the spot where I, uh, he went out of bounds, that's going to be an easy first down. And it is. There's Coach Thorpe stalking the sidelines. Had a great conversation with him in practice, and as he's standing right in front of this play, he's excited yeah, right to see there. this ball go across the first down line by Adam Ire. First and ten. Uh oh. Ball goes to Matthews and he meets the Liberty Wall. If there was a wall of liberty, there it is. Yeah, and look who's in the middle of that. Cole Sorrell's walking out. Man, I, I, I had a piece of that. But <laughs> again, you know, you know, this is our first time watching Matthews and, and he's gonna get some opportunity because he can touch the ball or we're gonna get a chance to see him do his thing and, and break one like you said earlier. He had a good run with the exception of the fumble, so he'll get loose sooner or later. Four minutes left in the half. Looks like offsides against East High School on the right side here, right in front of the camera. And the temperature's dipping by the minute. Not that that has anything to do whatsoever with what's going on in the field, Brian. Well, th well they're okay <laughs> on the field because they're running around, so they're, they're nice and warm. It's up here where it's getting a little chilly. And I may have to break down and put the T-shirt on this week. Coach Thorpe grinning, talking to his staff on the headphones, thinking, wow, we had such a great play. We were so excited to run it. We might have jumped a bit early. Great coaching staff up at East. Great things to look forward to in the coming years. King, broken play, kind of gets bumped by his own running back. Brings it about four yards short of the original line of scrimmage. It's going to be about uh, third and 13, third and 14. So they make a change at quarterback like we saw last week at North High School. Uh, always for different reasons. Here we have a sophomore in Christopher King running the offense up here for Coach Maples. Feels all the confidence in the world in him. You know, and that's a testament to good coaching too. When, when your backup players can play. Third and 12, Brian. King rolls left, decides to keep it. Can he get anything out of it? It's uh, Possibly in trouble by losing the ball. By losing the ball, is it a fumble recovered by Liberty? Oh, fourth down. See the fist coming up. It is fourth down. So uh, they move the ball. They make some things happen. Nothing long term or long distance. So uh, that'll bring up fourth down. Campus comes back in. They're going to punt the ball, or will they? Well, Vance, the one thing they've had is every time they've had the last two times they had good drives, they've had penalties to push them back. They decide to go for it. Fourth and eight. Campus. Quick drop. And he's going to get dropped quickly. James Basham continues to bash. So a uh, fourth and eight call by the East High staff. Hope to get something out of it before Campus could even get rid of it. Smothered by Basham. Yeah, Basham beat him to his, his drop. You can see right here he's re getting ready to throw in the setup. And here's Basham hitting him in the back. Campus Big fortunate to hang play. on to the ball. Yes, he is. And that brings up first and ten for Liberty. Nearly at midfield. And I speak the truth when I say that for this Liberty offense, midfield is almost like a quarter field for this offense that can just rack up yardage as if it was nothing. Montana, two split receivers out here left. Williams goes in motion. Williams cuts up. Montana drops back, looking for Williams. Has him wide open. Oh, goodness. Williams makes a great catch. Had he not tripped? It would have been six. A long, patient route. Fontana waited it out, but there is a penalty. Brian, let's, what's the call? You know, when that line is in that backfield like that, you know it's going to be somewhere on those linemen. Right. Fontana did have all the time in the world to I'm string out that long route, but uh, you, obviously he had time because of a little bit of a hold. I mean, Jim Williams just shows some excellent concentration right there as he goes, goes through, tripping to the ground. 
reaches out, snatches that ball with those hands. Well, you know, in truth, he ran from this sideline, went in motion, continued his route to the other side of the field, met the pigskin, and uh, doggone it. Can you imagine if he'd run that back 55 yards and look back to find a holding call? <laughs> he saved some wind right there, possibly. First and 17, Brian. 2.13 left in this half. My halftime guest, Nathan Rhodes. He'll be with us. Don't miss it. In motion, Williams again. This time the pitch goes to Sorrell. Sorrell cuts up, gets hit hard by this young sophomoric type defense for East High School. East High School coaching staff. Head coach Jim Maples, assistants Dave Thorpe, Ken Chapman, Ben Ensalva here, Chris Figueroa, Randy Maples, Chuck Mitchell, Don Crow, Tim Claggett, the trainer Michael Tillery. Sorrell gets hit hard and a special hello to Savannah Maples. Hi, Savannah. And that was Coach Crow calling these defenses that was over there talking to his defense. Second and 22. In motion, Nunez. The ball goes to Nunez. Nunez breaks another tackle. A big block out there by Jay Williams and uh, Akron County. I think you can call it yourself. Touchdown. Yeah, and, and you know. Very well executed play, but a missed tackle hurt. Well, not only the missed tackle, but you know, that huge block by Jay Williams to free him up right here. They came with the same play. This time the Nunez come underneath the other side. And he makes a guy miss right here. This is where his strength and size comes into play. Throws a man off of him. But watch this block right there by Jay Williams as he just comes back and nails the safety. And Nunez walks in with not anybody in the pitcher. And, you know, and that's what being a team is about. You know, you're willing to block for your other receiver. And you're not worried about who scores touchdowns. It's about winning games. PAT is perfect. It's perfect 28 points for Liberty High School. And uh, we've got a minute 19 left in the half. Patriots in a commanding lead over East High School. We talked about the history and the tradition of East High School and the longevity of its attractiveness to so many students up here on the East Side, but uh, Liberty also very attractive in its program. We had two assistants, Pat Preston and Mark Wyatt up here two weeks ago, and they would have enjoyed that had they been up here to see that block by Jay Williams. Yeah, and, you know, Dave Williams tonight is just showing you the full gamut of a receiver does. You catch balls, you block, and that's a total package as a receiver. He's just a junior, so we'll be seeing him a lot next year, too. Good. The youth of our Kern County High School football teams, we've seen the sophomore in Francis Ojuku at Stockdale our first week. He racked up a bunch of yards in the first week. He's a sophomore. We've got tons of sophomore on the fields tonight for uh, East High School and we've got uh, some juniors that are making their name statewide nationwide looking forward to uh, continued success by our players here and Time Warner of course doing the coverage 28 nothing this Blades crowd they want to stay in it they're excited that their players uh, have nationally and statewide recognized players but uh, they certainly like to put some points on the board here if not in the first half, certainly in the ball game. Here we go. McAtee, been busy tonight. Sets up his players. Here it comes. It heads south, and it'll be picked up. Gupton, looks like a reverse. It is. Pitch to Matthews. Can Matthews get outside? Did not fool the Liberty Patriots defense. He's brought down by Ben Hicks, and you spoke of this two weeks ago. You mentioned how Liberty special teams never leaves their assignment they stay in their lanes and with a kid like Matthews in the backfield and Gupton you got to expect this anyway yeah, they stay in their lanes you know and because they're able to stay in their lanes you kind of neutralize the a, a better athlete you know Gupton and, and Matthews obviously are, are two, by far two of the superior athletes on the field but when you stay in your lanes you're in a composure that speed can't just run by you like you see in, in other games so EB first and ten on their own 14-yard line. King on a keeper, wrapped up quickly by number, is that 88? No, it's 99. I don't have a 99, so I can't give you that name. Nice hit, though. Yeah, and this is a good play by your defensive end right there. Staying at home, when the quarterback commits, he commits and puts him down. Adam Ire split out here right. The ball goes up the middle. Matthews on the carry. 
maybe gets a couple. Clock's ticking still, 28 seconds left in the first half. East High School may get a playoff, and they will. There's your score, there's your time. At halftime, our special guest, Nathan Rhodes. Look forward to speaking with Nathan, getting some of his early experiences, and we'll talk about his time at East High School as well. Last play of the half. It's Chris King behind center. King pitches it out to Matthews. Matthews looking for a block from Gupton. Matthews goes out of bounds. That is the last play of the half. 28-0, Liberty leads. There's a penalty on the play. Let's find out before we break away. Personal foul. Gonna be, they didn't call a personal foul. That's like conduct just for tackling a man out of bounds. Here's our call, Kern County. It's going to be against Liberty. Brian, will we have another play? Time was out when the play, when the penalty expired. <laughs> time was expired when the penalty happened. So as it stands, time has expired. There's a penalty against Liberty. Both squads still on the field. My gut wants to tell me that there will be another play because you can't finish a half or the game on a defensive penalty. So Correct. I'm assuming that's the play, but there's still a bit of a delay happening. Official speaking to Jim Maples, the head coach, who's had an up and down first half, getting the word face to face. Head coach Maples. Legendary arm at West High School and Bakersfield College. Saw Jim out there at practice and uh, full squads walking off the field. I'll try to make sense of it somehow and get you the word on that, but uh, that's how it stands. 28 nothing, Kern County. It's Time Warner's high school football game of the week. Liberty leads by a bunch. Back in a moment with our halftime guest, Nathan Rhodes from East High School. These special sponsors who make this telecast possible are going to be giving you their side of the story. Hey, come back and visit us with Nathan Rhodes. Back in a moment, you're watching Time Warner's High School Football Game of the Week. The media has become a staple in our everyday lives, whether it's a song, an advertisement, or even a news story. Everywhere you turn, there's a message in one form or another. Do you realize how much media your child is exposed to every day? And everything your child sees and witnesses affects them. It's time to take action and become involved in what messages your child comes in contact with. Filter out the negativity and let these messages be positive. It's up to us to shape their future. Let it be a happy one. Some things can't be built in a day. Things like honesty, dedication, good hard work, and integrity. Since 1939, the law offices of Young Woodridge has had one of the strongest personal injury teams in the entire Central Valley. Today, that team is stronger than ever before. Through the years, our attorneys have won some of the highest dollar personal injury verdicts in Kern County. Put our experience to work for you. The law offices of Young Woodridge. Integrity you can trust. time ball game up here at the east side liberty leads 28 0 you know you're getting a good look at the difference between a basketball player and a football player i'm freezing and the big fellas in shorts say kern county look who it is nathan rhodes last year's number one ranked number one recruited offensive lineman in the entire country east high blade alumni now a washington husky it's a real pleasure to have nathan rhodes as our halftime guest nathan welcome back home and welcome on the show all right thank you hey nathan 
it's got to be a, a, a pleasure to be back here at hometown watching uh, the East High Blades play. Uh, how's it feel to be back? It feels good. Um, it feels bad that I'm not on the field, but, I mean, it feels real good. It's um, not too good of a game for my guys, but it's, it's fun to watch them play. We had your principal, Mr. Uh, Gibson, on the pregame show, and he spoke about the rich tradition and the heritage here at East High School. Uh, before we talk about your college life that you're experiencing now, why don't you give us a, a brief glimpse back into the past, because as I'm walking ahead to the interview, Kern County, he's shaking hands. He's running for mayor of East High already. He's, everybody knows Nathan. Give us a glimpse back in your past at East. Um, I came as a freshman. I didn't know anybody. Everybody here was really nice. Started out, it was really good. Um, I played all four years, you know, three sports. East High is great. I mean, you know, it's a little, you know, a little school or whatever. People don't really like East High, but it's a great school. The coaches are awesome. The uh, everybody's awesome. Counselors, everybody, teachers, everybody helps out. You know, the friends. I have a lot of friends I still talk to. They're off in college and everything. So East High was a great experience and great people here at East High. Good stuff, Nathan. Let's move up now. Leave East High. You recruited heavily. Everybody knows about it. You sign. You go to Washington. Walk up to a big time campus, big time program, big time locker rooms. Give us a kind of an insight to your first few days, hours, weeks up there. A lot different, a lot more uh, high intense. You know, it's it's high speed. You know, you're learning so much. There's the everybody. I mean, everybody up there is is awesome caliber. It's just great players, great athletes. The coaches are high caliber and just uh, you know. You're going to school with, you know, a lot more people than high school, and it's a lot. It's just a lot different situation altogether, school and sports. And it's, it's you know, and they they baby you a little bit, you know. You get you get socks and you get your clothes washed for you, and it, it's a nice day. Ah, the inside scoop. Not to mention a gorgeous location up in Washington. In just a moment, I have a a Bruin over here that wants to uh, talk at you for just a moment. But let me ask you uh, about the reason that you're here, why you're able to join us tonight and not be on the field this coming weekend against the Bruins. Tell us about the injury and uh, uh, the status of you getting into action. Um, I have a little injury in my back, um, in my lower back that I'm trying to get straightened out. We're trying to pinpoint exactly what it is. Um, I'm gray shirting this year, so I'll be back for second quarter of school, and I have my retro season available next week, uh, next year. So I'm just I'm trying to get the injury straightened out, and that's the reason I'm back. From County. We're talking to the big fella, Nathan Rhodes at East High School. Brian, former UCLA Bruin, this Saturday, big game. Bruins, Huskies, what do you have to say? Oh, we've been down in uh, Lake Puget Sound right there in that area in Husky Stadium and beaten them before, but I want to talk to you about Nathan is, what's it like to uh, be coached by Coach Newhouse? Because he was my position coach at UCLA. What's your experience been with him so far? Um, coach Newhouse is an awesome guy. He's a great recruiter. Um, He's, he's not like a lot of coaches. He's there at, you know, dinners, and, you know, he gives you time. I mean, you can walk up to him during practice. You can talk to him whenever you want. You know, his office is always open, and Coach Newhouse is an awesome coach and a great guy. Speaking of awesome coaches, final word, final question. You played for Jim Maples. Your thoughts on head coach Maples? Maples is a great guy, too. He's, he's a real good guy. You know, he's a great teacher, great coach, and I, like, I love playing for him. Kern County, Nathan Rhodes, let's wish him the best. Let's tip our hats to him. Good luck. A real pleasure having you here. Hey, thanks, big fella. Back in a moment, second half, right after this. If you've been to a video rental store lately, you know that DVDs are replacing videotape faster than CDs replaced albums. And now, Time Warner Productions can transfer your own home videos to DVDs. Up to one hour is $29.95, and up to two hours is $39.95. Videotapes can get brittle, sag, fade, or even break. By transferring your videotape to DVD, you are preserving your precious memories. Give us a call at 322-1941 for more information, or simply drop off your tapes in the Time Warner Cable Building. AERN News Talk 1410, Bakersfield's hometown news and talk leader. The station you can trust first for breaking news and the most complete local coverage. We are KERN News Talk 1410, bringing you the pulse of the world, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Make an appointment with KERN News Talk 1410, Bakersfield's hometown news and talk leader. The Law Offices of Young Woolrich. Kern Radio 1410. Real Rock 104. And Jesus Shack. Present. 
the high school football game of the week, exclusively on Time Warner Cable. Welcome back, Kern County. Liberty leads 28-0 over East High School. We're up on the east side. This is Vance Palm alongside my partner in time, Brian Adams. Just had a nice chat with the big fella, Nathan Rhodes. Nathan seems poised and put together. Talk about putting things together. Last week's winners for the Disney California Adventure. On Friday night, it was David Long, and on Saturday morning, it was Brooke Farnstead. Congratulations. The winners can pick up their tickets anytime, Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, at the Time Warner Business Lobby, located at 3701 North Select Avenue. That's David Long from Friday night and Brooke from Saturday morning. And now it's time for Time Warner Cable's California Adventure Ticket Giveaway. Here's the question. Name the only cable company in Kern County to offer HBO on demand. Name the only cable company to offer HBO on demand to their customers. Call with your answers right now. 395-3343. The first correct answer will win two tickets to Disney's California Adventure. The winners will be announced Monday on the website. That's timewarnervegasville.com. Call it in. You could be the lucky winners, and that website is picking up more and more momentum. And the penalty, Kern County, at the end of the half was assessed now, Brian. So you've got East High School kicking off. It's almost up at Bakersfield College, though, so far up. Yeah, and I would definitely try an onside kick, too, if I had this kind of field position. Wow, here we go. Let's start the, uh, look at this, Kern County. Oh, doggone it, it goes backwards. If that's not the luck of, uh, I don't know who, the onside kick with the ball at the 30-yard line to kick off, I think ended up back at the 30. Is that... Is that correct? Here you go. Yep, ball went back. Well, um, you always want to think you've seen it all, but we start off the second half with East High kicking off on the 30-yard line, and I'm not making fun, but it, it, the truth is the ball is at the 29-yard line now, first and 10. Unfortunate, if that's the right term. First and 10, Liberty, start off the second half. They've already been prolific in the first half. The ball gets handed out there to Ricky Henderson. Ricky Henderson has nice blocking by Cole Sorrell, and uh, Ricky gets about a four yard gain. Looked like more, but it really ends up only being about four yards, so East High School can't get a break. No, they can't, that's just been the story tonight so far. Right here, Ricky Henderson's dragged down right there for a short gain or no gain, but it's a penalty. Look at this, holding on Liberty, so they're catching a break. As I mentioned earlier, it's been kind of a, a roller coaster seesaw ride for head coach Maples tonight. The very beginning of the game, he's up, and then, then he's down, and he's up, and he's down, and things like this. He kicks off the second half with a, a one-yard kick on an onside attempt. Liberty rolls off another big gain, and now they get it clocked back. So it's first and 25. East High School absolutely must pounce on this opportunity to get back in this ball game. Fontana, been sharp all night. Looks across the middle, and is that the break? Oh, goodness, that could have been the break that they were looking for. Almost intercepted out there by Christopher King, who's also been running QB duties, and doggone it, Brian, that could have been the break they were looking for. Hey, Christopher King is very quick, and we're going to see him just break on this ball on a slant route, and he ends up running the slant for Nunez right there and just can't hold on to it. And two chances at an interception, and they just, have, just haven't had things go their way tonight. That brings up second and 25 for Liberty. Any other squad might be a bit taken back by that number, but 25 yards to Liberty is uh, not much these days. Fontana hands the ball off again to number 21, Ricky Henderson. And I say 25 yards isn't much. How about 75 yards? Ricky Henderson finally rocked down at the very end by Dwight Gupton, their speedy receiver, but we talk about 25 yards not being much. How about three quarters of the field just like that? Well, you called it right here. Ricky Harris does a good job of cutting back. We're going to see Jay Williams get another big block. You see him come through right here. Watch Jay. Gets in front of him. Good job of getting in front of the player and knocking him out. And, and Gupton uses his speed right here and just 
runs down Henderson. And says, you're not getting in the end zone there, Mr. Henderson. You're going to have to get in another way. Officially, it was an 81-yard run. And in the hearts and the minds of East High School, it might be an 81-yard dagger. Yikes. First and goal. The ball goes up the middle to Ken Berman. Berman's 6'2", 175 pounds, all muscle. He brings it when he takes the ball. Brings up second and two. And you talk about Jay Williams laying these key blocks on guys. He's, uh, as you say, a complete player, if you will. Yeah, he, I mean, he has a total package. He has size, good speed, smooth player, catches the ball in his hands, and then he's looking to block people, you know. So he's, he's aggressive out there from that receiver position. Second and two, ten and a half left in the third quarter. Fontana, Patriots quarterback, hands the ball up the middle, and it's a touchdown. Appropriately enough, they give the ball to Henderson to let him punctuate that 81-yard run, and it's 34-0 uh, Liberty. And this is just straight power football right here. Your fullback comes out, kicks out. Ricky leads underneath and, and drives into the end zone, and easy touchdown. Extra point attempt by a very busy Andrew McAtee tonight. High snap, good snag, and it's up. No penalty flags, and uh, East High School find themselves in a serious hole here up on the hill at home, trailing by 35. Coach Maples, Coach Thorpe having a quick chat. Brian, I imagine if you can equate this sport into another sport where you're having a struggle, coaching staff, not much about X's and O's anymore. It's about staying in it, keeping guys up, and uh, more on the mental side, emotional yeah, side. You know, and, 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 uh, where I can equate to a sport like basketball, just have one of those nights where it's just like a lid on the basket. I mean, anything you do, just the ball doesn't fall in. You, you call a play, it's wide open, ball doesn't go in. That's kind of what's happened to East tonight. They've had opportunities, they just have not been able to get over the mountain and make those plays to, to get points on the board and, and stay right there. So Liberty kicks off again. We're just underway in the second half in what will seem like an eternity for this Liberty crowd who now begins to start thinking about other things, Brian. Let's be frank. And let's start talking about Liberty, who next week will finish their season against Foothill, who is winless this season. So conventional wisdom will tell us that they're going to end up at 5-0 and in league, 8-2 and for the season, and start thinking about uh, major playoffs, unless, of course, Foothill comes up with the biggest win of the season. Matthews, can you get outside and get some room? Matthews gets up to the 47-yard line of Liberty. So Matthews, of course, is never going to quit. That's how he racks up yards, by continuing to plow forward. And one continuing theme on the upside tonight for East High is they've started a pretty decent field position every single time. Yeah, they just haven't wanted to capitalize. But right here, good job again of going off that wedge. And this East High special teams on um, kickoff return has found something by going off that right side. And again, you know, I mean, we're looking at 35 points on the board, but again, they have two players out there that can score points quickly. So they just can't start taking off and looking totally to the next week. Good point. East High School, in their best interest to, uh, well, let me ask you. I shouldn't say it, let me ask you. Your philosophy? High school player, big time college player. Do you let the clock run and let this game take its natural course or do you just keep going at it with everything you got? Long passes, um, open up the playbook. I try anything I can to get back in this game and score a touchdown and come back on defense because anything can happen. That's the voice of Brian Adams. Brian Adams knows what he's talking about. Matthews knows how to run and he takes what at first looked like not much and got about six yards. That'll bring up third and four, third and four and a half right around there. Nine minutes left in the third quarter. Still a ton of fans here on this side for East High School. Faithful following. King keeps the ball. He's 
brought to the ground by Chad Sied and King, another sophomore. Let's talk about the youth of East High School and how to build on these games and how to build on a season like this. Well, what they're getting is experience, you know, and when you get that kind of experience, it's just going to make you better for the next season because those guys are learning to play the game at a varsity level, which is, a, you know, when you come from freshman football or JV football to varsity, that's a big jump. So they're getting a lot of valuable experience, and when you got that youth, it's going to pay off when you're seniors. And, you know, one team that we're seeing is doing that. We haven't seen them this year on TV coverage, and that's Garces. Garces has a, a senior-led team because those guys have been together for the last couple of years, and right now they're, they're the best team in the city, or in the area, actually. First and 10 for East High School. We have more things to talk about, but uh, let's watch these East High Blades get Mr. Moe on their side. King. Hands the ball to Matthews. Matthews grinds out about three or four yards. Speaking of Matthews, Kevin Eubanks had in his article today that a Matthews, a Matthews record looks unlikely. I spoke with Kevin today via email. Mr. Eubanks from the California has been so helpful in assisting Brian and I in our telecast. And I'll give you a quote that he said in just a moment. Eight and a half left in the third quarter. East High School trying to march down the field. King hands the ball to Matthews. Matthews keeps his legs moving. And they're hitting hard out there. And I mean, these pads are popping. Brian Eubanks, I asked him if East High was to pull off a big win tonight, would it be, in his estimation, the biggest upset of the season? He said, no doubt. He goes, anything can happen with Gupton and Matthews to reiterate what you have said. But right now, they need a ton to happen. King keeps the ball. And whenever I describe a player as smallish, I mean it in reference to the guys he may be going up against. Quarterback Christopher King is 5'8", 140 pounds, and he's going up against some uh, some pretty big guys across the line. So this sophomore getting some early, some early reps in in his high school career, and not only is he getting the reps in, he's taking some pops. Well, anytime you play quarterback and you run the ball from quarterback position, you're going you're gonna to take some hits because that's pretty much like a running back. And then, too, when you go back to pass, you throw a pass, people are hitting you a little late, or right as you're throwing the ball. So, that, I mean, that quarterback position is a position where you're going to get some pounding every game. Fourth and three, East High School going for it. King rolling back left and brought down again by, guess who, James Basham. He has had some big plays tonight for big losses, and it looked as if Liberty exactly knew what was coming. Yeah, right there, they're going to try to get out to the left, and Basham doesn't have, says not have any of that. He keeps good contained. You see how his right shoulder is upfield, and he keeps the quarterback inside of him. The quarterback never gets out to cause any damage. At the conclusion of this game, we'll be having the young Woolridge player of the game. Stay tuned for Kevin Burton and myself to give out that award to the exemplary performance and player of tonight. Fontana, hands the ball off to Ricky Henderson. Ricky Henderson is hit hard by this young sophomore defense of East High School, but Henderson tallies up another seven, eight yards, as tough as they were. Yeah, you know, like you said, I mean, you can hear it on both sides. Both these defenses are, are, are making some pop today, this evening, so. Fontana. Excellent game tonight. Second and two for the Patriots. Fontana drops back, goes across the middle, not handled by Jay Williams. Dangerous, almost taking the distance there by Seth Dameron. Seth Dameron in the area, almost fell into his hands and would have been a great, great, great play. Yeah, right here you see Fontana, the first miscue he really had, throwing the balls behind Jay. Does a good job of getting his ball on it and stopping the ball from actually getting to Dameron for the interception. So Mike Marquez and Dameron out on the play. Dameron from that Dameron family, Bakersfield College and Arvin High School fan. Ball goes up the middle to Ken Berman. Great ball fake by Fontana, and I can see you shaking your head. He just does everything right, doesn't he? Yeah, they're just very sound football players. I mean. You watch him to carry out their fakes. They, he puts it in there. Even though the ball's already gone, he's still running his fake down the line just in case to let the little defensive players know that he may keep the ball sometime and you have to work with him. First and 10 Patriots, 6-12 left in this third quarter. 
Clock's ticking, Patriots marching. Jay Williams in motion. He's had a big game tonight also. The ball goes to Ricky Henderson. Ricky Henderson stays behind his blocking. Ricky Henderson cuts back up. Gets drugged down at the 20-yard line by number 20. Sorry, number 22, Axel Humiston. So Ricky Henderson has the same name as the speedy baseball player, and boy, he can turn it up, can he? Yeah, you know, and Ricky right here, he's gotten over 100 yards on about three rushes, so he's doing the job in here. You know, we saw Cole Sorrell had that big game two weeks ago. You know, so there's a plethora of running back for the Liberty Patriots. First and 10, again, Fontana. Pitches the ball out to Henderson. Henderson misses a tackle. Finally wrapped up in there by number 56, Mark Elliott. But he makes a, you know, makes a case for himself, Ricky Henderson, as a guy that can do pretty much anything. Catch the ball, return the ball, run the ball, block. Which just goes to show how deep this Liberty squad is. We saw them play the drillers, and you know that was a barn burner down to the very last play of the ball game. But Liberty, at times at that game against BHS, did look commanding. Five minutes left in the third quarter. Fumble. Montana recovers. Yeah, and Busted in the, play. And in that game, we just saw another. I mean, those were just two really good defensive ball cups playing against each other. And, and so we didn't get to see the offensive explosion that we're seeing tonight. But uh, they just don't make a lot of mistakes offensively. I mean, right there was almost one, but Montana does a good job of securing the ball. Doesn't try to make anything happen. Clock keeps moving. Just over four minutes left in the third quarter. We're up on the hill, East High School. Brian and I overlooking the city. As I was asking uh, the principal tonight, wouldn't you like to bottle up this euphoric Friday night high school football feeling if you wanted to? It's here tonight at East High. Third and eight. Fontana looks inside, throws to Jay Williams. Jay Williams, a hand receiver, as Brian mentioned, grabs it, pulls it in. I don't know if it's a first down. But even the quote unquote simple plays like a slant inside looks textbook, doesn't it? Yeah, and that's a good play by Gumpton right there to, to make that a short gainer, you know, because Williams has been catching some balls like that and, and taking off for 40, 50 yards this season. So the weapons are everywhere. Williams, Henderson, Sorrell, Berman, quarterback Fontana never stops. The ball goes to Ken Berman. Ken Berman wants to get in. He just absolutely pounds his way into the end zone. That's number 40, Ken Berman. 6'2", 175 pounds, all muscle, big neck brace. Just looks like a small locomotive coming in there. I mean small. <laughs> yeah, you know, look at Berman. Once again, this, low this, to the ground. this is his second touchdown. He has to have close to over 50 yards, 60 yards rushing. But, I mean, again, just uses his strength just to roll over the defensive back and get in the end zone. Tiredest leg in town, McAtee. Nice snap, it's up, it's good. The score is what it is, 42-0. Liberty leads East. Matthews, the prolific running back for East High School, has had his moments, but not nearly enough to climb this insurmountable hill that Liberty's placed in front of the East High offense. Yeah, and you know, and you allude to his, his uh, attack on that single season 10 game rushing record we're talking about 2300 yards in in 10 games so we're talking about 200 over 200 yards or plus per game and there's some defenses that are going to be able to hold them next week a very special telecast we're going out to the country and from this Arvin guy i gotta tell you i'm gonna love it out in the grape vineyards right out at wasco shafter at wasco will be our final league game high school football game of the week I want to talk about a rivalry, Brian. I mean, this is a great game. I've been fortunate now to have seen four of them. I mean, and those teams, it doesn't matter what the record is, they battle, and it's a well-played, hard-played game. And for a lot of bragging rights, for a very close distance between those two cities. A close follower in high school football will say there's a title game on this side of the town. There might be a title game on the other side of town. Very true. We're covering what we believe to be is one of the most intriguing and historic games in Kern County, Shafter at Wasco. I can't wait, looking forward to it. And then after that, it's the playoffs. Wow. Three and a half left in the third quarter. Patriots kicking off. East High School back to receive. 
It is going to be handled by number 41, David Naranjo. David muscles his way up to about the 29 yard line. East High School will take over. Brian, at the beginning of the year, head coach Jim Maples, in his preview with Kevin Eubanks, talked about Dwight could be the Blake Mackey of this season. He said he has 4.5 speed and we're expecting a big year for him from him. And that's exactly what they've gotten from Gupton. He is a senior, wants to extend his playing career. And with all the attention that goes to Matthews, Gupton starting to show his talents and his wares late in the season. Yeah, and then, you know, he got a 200 uh, receiving yard game as a receiver. I mean, that's a tremendous uh, feat. Ball goes up to the middle. To Matthews, doesn't happen. Second and ten, that brings up. Three minutes left in the third quarter. You're watching Time Warner's high school football game of the week. These fans are sticking around. He's an employee, so he better stick around. <laughs> King, the quarterback for the Blades. King keeps it, decides to go upfield in the last minute. Tripped up in there by Shane Hawkins. Shane upset because he didn't drag him down himself. Brian looking at the playoff picture down the road. Not this season, but the next season, next year, 2003, we could see a different format in the locations of where these games are played. But as it stands this coming November of football, will be played right around here locally with hopes of uh, some big title games right here in the city. Yeah, you know, all that depends on your seeding. You know, if you have a number one seed and you're able to hold it through or number two to number one gets knocked off. But there should be a, at least one big title game if the teams can play, how they've been all year to get to that position. Matthews takes the pitch, runs horizontally, doesn't pick up anything. And uh, East High School certainly was cognizant of the fact that they were playing a top caliber team. It doesn't take a genius to figure out when you're playing a team like Liberty that you have your work cut out for you. Being at practice as I was on Wednesday, East High looked confident, upbeat. But in reality tonight, they're facing a well put together team in Liberty. The punt, decent punt, takes a nice bounce, and it'll be Liberty ball on their own 35 yard line. Yeah, and Vance, that's a good point. When you're trying to come in and upset a team and, and shake up shake up the league sort of sort of uh, sort of you can't afford to not uh capitalize on some opportunities and turn the ball over and that's really what, what has hurt them as, a, as an early turnover and not be able to capitalize it kind of allowed the game to get a situation where you're playing catch up against a, a very good team who doesn't give up a lot of points first and ten liberty patriots they're up 42 nothing giving every one of our viewers a chance to see that they're a team to be reckoned with in the next few weeks. New quarterback for the Patriots. It's number 11, Chris Newton. Chris Newton hangs on to it, cuts up field, gets about four yards. And as I was just about to ask you this question about Provencal and getting some guys some work, he does it. Yeah, you know, and, and he knows he's in control of the game, and, and this is where you give your guys who are second team a chance to get some work because some of these guys have to step up next year and play for you, so you want them to have some experience coming into the season. Second and five on that carry by Chris Newton. The pitch out to number one, Anthony Harnlett. Harnlett takes some big hits out there. So some of these players that might not get as many reps in a tight ball game get to come out here and uh, get their jerseys dirty take their take their licks take their pops and uh, talk about it tonight you know yeah and, and again like, just to read what I said I mean it, it makes a difference when you have the ability to get up like this to get these guys experience because you never know what's going to happen next year when you're counting these guys to play and somebody might get hurt and have to step up and at least they have that experience to, rec to re recall when they go on the field Last play of the third quarter. So no matter who's throwing it, he's catching it. That's Jay Williams. 
Jay Williams brought down hard and heavy on these tie blades, and that will be the last play of the third quarter. Kern County, come back and join us for the conclusion of this game up at the east side. Patriots lead 42-0. You're watching Time Warner's High School Football Game of the Week. I'm Vance Palm alongside Brian Adams. Back in a moment with the final quarter of this game up on the east side. Some things can't be built in a day. Things like honesty, dedication, good hard work, and integrity. Since 1939, the law offices of Young Woodridge has had one of the strongest personal injury teams in the entire Central Valley. Today, that team is stronger than ever before. Through the years, our attorneys have won some of the highest dollar personal injury verdicts in Kern County. Put our experience to work for you. The law offices of Young Woodridge, integrity you can trust. KERN News Talk 1410, Bakersfield's hometown news and talk leader. The station you can trust first for breaking news and the most complete local coverage. We are KERN News Talk 1410, bringing you the pulse of the world, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Make an appointment with KERN News Talk 1410, Bakersfield's hometown news and talk leader. Welcome back to the fourth quarter. This is Vance Palm and Brian Adams. Liberty High School goes for the punt, and it's blocked just as we start our fourth quarter. So some nice action out there by East High School, Brian. And uh, it's ridiculous to say that any team would ever just kind of give up or quit. We know that's not going to take uh, be the case. And exemplified here with that really nice play by the special teams. They get a big block, and just like this, they get the ball in the 25-yard uh, line. Let's get in the end zone. And, you know, the East High special teams tonight has, has done a stellar job. You know, a block kick, a, a recovered uh, punt that they recovered and got the ball and then they had some good returns so special teams wise they did a good job tonight Kern County I had to apologize didn't even get the number on that block but I thought it was Axel Humiston or Humiston I think here comes campus he's back at the quarterback spot he's got time he's got space he's gonna run it he's got a few Patriots are gonna catch up with him but not until he gets to the 10-yard line so a nice play by campus and uh, this East High crowd and these cheerleaders that have stuck with it they want pay dirt baby Campus made a nice move and got some space. Yeah, right there, he just does right, just jailhouse break. He gets free, and Basham does a good job of chasing him down. That's a lineman going after the quarterback and not, not quit on the play, but not before Campus picks up about 12 yards and, and starts knocking on that door to score. First and 10, East High, Campus. Hands the ball up the middle. And I believe it's Mr. Matthews it is. Hey, Kern County, we certainly want to extend a very heartfelt thank you to our key sponsors that make these telecasts possible. We get so much positive feedback, and we thank you for that. Well, these are the people that we really need to thank, KERN 1410. And let's get to the point, Real Rock 104.3, Jesus Shack, and Young Woolridge. And, of course, the Young Woolridge player of the game to be announced in 10 minutes and 48 seconds. Campus drops back, throws it out wide. He has Gupton. I don't know if he got a yard. It was about a 40-yard pass, but it uh, it went horizontally. So I think Gupton might have picked up one or two yards, if that. Brian, they need to start going vertically to get in the end zone. Yeah, you do. And you know, right there, you know, it's a short pass. That just shows you that Gupton's hands. You know, France. I mean, we talked about Jay Williams. Gupton's also a good hands receiver. Attacks the ball in his hands and and a really good receiver. We just need a chance to really see him show his skills tonight. Third and seven, important play for the psyche of these East High Blades to get in the end zone, to score some points. Ten minute mark exactly. Campus rolls left, has a couple options, throws short. Ball deflected by Jamin Moore, and that'll bring up fourth down. And Brian, after this play, we'll talk a little bit about the action that we're uh, seeing tonight and uh, next week. In high school football, there's the underthrown pass Ooh, by yeah. campus, and yikes. That almost went for a 95-yard touchdown the other way. Tonight, we heard a score earlier at halftime. It was BHS 7, Highland 7. Interesting going-ons downtown. You know, 7, here comes East. Sorry, Brian. It's okay. Campus throws across the middle, and this one is intercepted, and maybe not wisely intercepted because <laughs> it's going to be on the uh, one-yard line. 
But instincts take over, you just grab it, don't you? Yeah, you do. I mean, he, that's just being a football player right there. I mean, you, he's making a play, and, you know, you don't think about, okay, he throws a bull, I'm going to knock it down. You, do, you get the Oski interception, and, and unfortunately went to his knees. And it's well, the way they're walking it back, it looks like he caught it in the end zone. Well, that's right, yeah, right in the goal line, so. Well, a smart play then. Yeah. <laughs> he gained yards on it. Yeah, you know, we, didn't, we never saw a touchback signal, so, right, right. so they, I think they're going to mark on the one, so. I try to take my cues off the officials if I'm not sure. Nine minutes, 55 seconds left in this ball game. Liberty in total control, leading 42-0. The ball goes to the left side to number one, Anthony Hartlett, and he's met quickly and brought down by number 54, I thought Alex Pimienta. Second and 12. 53, Brian, don't have it on, on my number here. Sorry, Kern County, nine and a half minutes left in this ball game. Brian, after this play, I want to get back to some of these games we've got going on here tonight. Your thoughts, big game, north and west. Second and 12, Liberty. Has the ball. Newton thrown for a big loss. Number 45, Victor Montano was there again with our mystery tackler, number 53. Ryan, north and west tonight. Big implications either way. If West happens to pull that out, and Centennial wins tonight at the Golden West. It's a 9-0, 9-0, or 9-0, 8-1 big-time situation. We'll talk about that in a moment. Third and 16. This goes out to Harnett. Harnett brought down by the Blades. So we look at possibility tonight, a scenario, Centennial winning. They move up to undefeated rank in league. They move to 8-1 overall. Liberty wins tonight, 4-0, 7-2 overall. West High wins tonight. Some big games coming up. Fourth and 15. Something back for East at the 45-yard line. This punt gets off. It's a decent one. He calls for the fair catch. Right at the 50-yard line, and smart as he's got six Liberty players staring him down. And if they're going for a block kick, that's why he calls for fair catch. It's a safe punt. Got it. But uh, in terms of like the uh, Southwestern Center League, you're right, Vance. We have the, the uh, North-West matchup. The North wins, then you have two teams at two and one. And with West going to Centennial, if West meets Centennial, you have a three-way tie at first. So there's a lot of strange things that can happen in that league. If, if North wins or West wins, you have the matchup of two undefeated league opponents, and they're battling for the championship. So there's a lot on the line in these games tonight. We'll know in just a moment. Wow, it was a well-drawn-up play, a nice pass by Campus, and it appeared to drift through the fingers of Gupton. We'll have to see on the replay. I thought this was right in his fingertips. Yeah, Gupton's taking off right there, and it's just right outside. Oh. And the only thing he could have tried doing that one was lay out, but you see his ability to accelerate once the ball's in the air, and, and that's how he's able to get those 200-yard receiving games. That pass looked like head coach Jim Maple's pass on Wednesday. He was running the drills and threw a 50-yard bomb on the mark. Hasn't lost his touch, coach. Second and 10 for the Blades. Ball goes to Matthews. Matthews nearly broke away, but gets four yards on the carry. We've got the Drillers and Highland playing tonight. We heard of the 7-7 score at tie. They're both at 2-1. and one. Yeah, and you know, and the thing I want to talk about Highland is they're a good defensive ball club. I mean, and they came and, and put a good defensive effort against West High, just couldn't get the offense to score any points. But, you know, that team is solid defensively. Third and seven. Matthews gets the ball, breaks outside. Boy, we'd like to see him break one. Can he get outside? He does. Hey, Kern County, there's a look at the second leading rusher in the state. Leandre Matthews finally gets in the end zone, and it gives us a glimpse of what this East High crowd has been seeing all year long, the patience, the vision, and then the acceleration, Brian. Yeah, I think you said it best. The patience first. You see right here, he's patient. He sees the vision, and then his acceleration, his ability to go from you know, zero to 40 very fast. And right here, he's going to walk in the end zone as he goes down the sideline. Six points for East High School.
crowd from Liberty. Thinking, well, we're up by a lot of points, but that was a pretty nice run. The kick is up, and it's good by Daniel Reza. So East Highs gets on the scoreboard with a vintage run from their vintage running back. And for those of you Time Warner subscribers, you just got a chance to see number two man in the state in yardage, number eight man in scoring. Might move up tonight with another touchdown. So uh, good stuff for East High School running back Matthews. And uh, I think of all the games we're going to see him play next year, and that's exciting. Yeah, and, you know, and just, he said, this is our first chance to really see him, and he's had a, a tough night until then, but it's just amazing his, his balance and his durability because he's getting the ball 25, you know, 30 times a game. So he's, he's a durable back, too. So he's, you know, he's not shy of, con shy of contact. And you know, at practice um, Wednesday, I try to watch the rapport that a player such as he who carries the team, if you will, uh, in some instances, you know, I like to watch. I like to watch a player's rapport with the other players. Is he ostracized? Is he a loner? Is he a guy that doesn't get along with everybody? But not the case with this young guy. He's out there getting along with everybody, joking, having a good time. Not a hint of arrogance. Not a hint of hey, you guys, you know, I'm the guy. Not at all. Great kid, and uh, look forward to great things from this running back Matthew. So East High School kicks off, going to the second time in the ball game. It's a high floater going to be taken by uh, Jay Williams, and that might not be the guy you want to have a floater land into him, but he's brought down very well out there. On the wing, and it looks like it's Christopher King. He's been everywhere. He's DB, quarterback, special teams, and uh, Man, Christopher he, King working yeah. hard as a sophomore, huh? And he's a tough little player for a sophomore. I mean, you're going to see him come up right here. Jay's going to try to straight arm him, but he's going to stay in there and fight. Holds <laughs> on that jersey and pulls the bigger man down. Look at that, Kern County. I you got to love it. And, and, and that just goes to show a lot for the young players out there that determination goes a long way when you're playing football. East High School starting squad on defense has, I believe, six sophomores on it. And tonight they're playing some even, even more sophomores, trying to get them some reps. And the pass incomplete out there to Kyle McClintock. Nice route and a nice pass just dropped, I think. Brings up second and 10, the clock does stop. So you think Coach Provencal not worried too much about clock usage here. He wants to get some reps in for his guys. Yeah, that looks like what he's, what he's doing right now. He's giving these guys an opportunity to uh, to uh, make some plays. Second and 10 for Liberty High School Patriots. Nice crowd came down the road to watch him play tonight. Newton, the quarterback. Newton keeps, goes right. Pitches it out to number 31. Robert Thacker, and Thacker's swarmed on by a ton of East High Blades with uh, Seth Dameron out there containing everybody, making sure it stays inside. And you see right there, he pitches a Thacker, and there's a host of EB Blades waiting for him as they strung that play out, and pretty much the, like call, the call beat, the, the defense the coordinator's call beat the offensive coordinator's call on that one. Third and 15. A few moments, I'm going to get a history lesson from Brian Adams about this field and this school and some of the heritage that goes along with what the principal Gibson had to say about tonight. Wow, tough defense by East High School, but look at this, Kern County. Another breakaway, Robert Thacker this time. He's up to the 35-yard line. Can Thacker break it? He will. A great run by, no, Robert Thacker steps out of bounds. At about maybe the 17 or 18-yard line, but... If it wasn't for that stepping out of bounds, Robert Thacker, 5'10", 180-pound speedster, would have seen Catered on his breakaway, Brian. Yeah, you see Robert there right here, nice strike, good speed. He's going to go into that corner trying to get to that sideline. It is just knocked out by number 17, which we do not have a name on him, but unable to stay in bounds, and they'll probably get the ball again on this run. First and 10 on the 18-yard line, Patriots. Behind quarterback Chris Newton and the long run of Robert Thacker are in the neighborhood again, and they're knocking it. East High shows blitz, and did they encroach, or did they get that offensive line a little squirmish? And I think it was illegal motion on the backfield. Our Time Warner crew is picking this up already for us. Yeah, that's a good call by our crew and, and you, and moving five yards back. 
Well, our crew called it in the truck, and speaking of that, hats off again to fantastic job from our Time Warner crew production. Our crew we'll get to in just a moment. Fabulous job tonight, fellas. What a picture. First and 15. Newton running the offense. Hands the ball up the middle to another weapon. That's Junior Solis. Solis touching the rock. He just powers up just like Roman had been doing and powers down there for about a five, six, or ten yard pickup. After this play, Brian, I want a history lesson. A lot of great athletes went to this school, but there's some history about this field's name as well. In motion, Kyle McClintock, Newton. Oh, a big, huge play by East High School. Look at this, Kern County. It could be a touchdown. The breakaway run is the quarterback, Campus. Campus picks up a fumble. Fantastic play, a huge hit by Victor Montano on the quarterback, Newton. And if you want to talk about rich tradition up here, hard-hitting E.B. Blades and a pickup recovery for a 70-yard touchdown run or right around there. Brian, before your history lesson, we saw some real-time 2002 stuff. Wow. Yeah, and, and we don't know the record books, but that could be a, a play that's on the long phone recovers in, in their history. But right here, Montano gets a hit, and Campus, who's the quarterback, Phillip picks it up, and he's racing to the end zone here with a convoy of blaze leading the way for him. So uh, there's Campus running it in, and there's Campus grabbing a little air, and head coach Jim Maples coming over and uh, saying, hey, fella, good job, baby. You love it, and you love to see that from a head coach. Right now he's down by a significant amount, but on a great play like that, nothing feels better than the head coach coming over and saying great job baby yeah you know and that just shows the determination of the state to keep fighting and not give up as you alluded to earlier so the score is uh, 42 14 eb's put up 14 points here in about three minutes electrified this uh resilient and faithful crowd and good stuff good stuff so now eb again will kick off i'm assuming of course it'll be an onside here's your stats for you 42 14 5 16 left in the ball game, it's chilly up here tonight, but it's been a fun ball game, Brian. We've been able to see the Patriots do their stuff and show Kern County why they're ranked number three. Been able to see East High School and some glimpses of the future, if you will, and some uh, big plays to boot. Oh yeah, you know, and, and just like you said, uh, they just haven't quit, man. So they stayed in the game and defensively they made a big play and. You know, the, the players who are prime time, we got to see all of them do something special tonight, and, and that's a, a privilege to, to do. As we say, the crowd's sticking it out. They've got parkas and blankets and uh, high school football at its best. We're going to get to that history lesson in a moment, Brian, because uh, the research you dig up is incredible. Another high lob, and uh, it's going to be Scott Walls. Scott Wells, sorry, Wells gets up to the 44-yard uh, line. The onside's not producing the results that East High would want. And now Wells bringing up the ball to the 45-yard line. Let's talk history in this field, Brian. Okay, history. We have the Robert Wheeler Stadium, as Coach Gibson told us. Robert Wheeler was in World War II and then served a tour there and then came back and was fought in the Korean War where he lost his life, and, and they memorialized the stadium for Robert Wheeler. And it's also another uh, player here from the East High Blade tradition it is Ray Permitter is also the home of Permitter Field, and Ray Permitter lost his life in World War II. He was shot down a bomber. And Mr. Permitter, and I got that information from Ned Permitter, the, the legendary coach at Foothill, which is his cousin Ray, earned four letters in football, basketball, baseball, and track while he was a blade, and he's also the first blade to ever score a touchdown against the Bakersfield High Drillers. Thank you, Brian. Again, the rich history of East High School talk about rich history time warner gable's been covering fight night at the garden and we will continue to do that i'll be your blow by blow commentator brian you got the night off unless you want to join me ringside fight night at the garden channel 21 on november 17th and 18th newton drops back floats it up there this one's picked off by east high school so uh simon arietta comes down with an interception and east high school 
never losing their life, just rejuvenating it here. Yeah, just a good interception right there. Good play from the safety. Picks it off and back to Matthews and company. So uh, on cue, as Brian's bringing up the history and tradition of the actual field we're playing on, good vibrations start to uh, tremble here for the uh, Blades, and they've got the ball. 14 to 42 is the score. Sure, you might think it's insurmountable, but uh, they've got 14 points in three minutes and the ball back in their hands. And here comes Matthews, the second leading rusher in the state. So if it's insurmountable, don't tell the Eastside Blades. Matthews breaks another big long run, cuts back. Hey, Kern County, they're in the end zone just like that. Brian, give me some more history on this field. They can use it. Matthews Whoa. racking up some serious yards in like four minutes time. Wow. Yeah, Ma Matthews has been kind of stifled all day long. And, and right now, 65 yards. He's taking advantage. And, and he's broken the 100-yard barrier by now with these two runs. But this is where his speed comes in. You talk about his vision, fans. Watch this cutback right here. He has to hung up the dry, cuts back. No stop in the air. Touchdown. And... Four minutes left. There's 20 points. And so they're going to try to split the score here with this PAT, make it 21 to 42. The kick it's up, and it's good by Daniel Reyes. So uh, they're trailing by 21. They've scored 21 in the last three and a half minutes. So East High School giving their faithful crowd all they can hope for. And uh, you gotta love it, Brian. Now let's see if this next onside kick here can be maybe a little more productive than a lob into one of their top uh, receivers. Yeah. Well, these cheerleaders, hang on, these cheerleaders, I gotta say this because we always talk about the players and the, and the, the guys on the field. We always see the cheerleaders in our coverage. These girls out here tonight, for both squads, mind you, but these girls out here in their sweatsuits and the freezing cold have been sticking it out. Now, the last three minutes, they've been sprinting back and forth from the end zone, back and forth. So they're getting a workout too, Brian. Go ahead. Yeah, and, and you didn't talk about the onside kick. If they get this onside kick, I would be surprised if Coach Prosop doesn't come back with his starting defense. Brian Adams stating that head coach Provencal up 21 to prove a point possibly to say, hey guys, we're gonna give you some time out there. Make the most of it, make the best of it. If not, bring in the regulars. To... So now Liberty's about 12 yards, 13 yards off the ball, thinking maybe another lob. So they're getting a bit of an edge here or they're giving a bit of an edge to East High. Should be a low kick and it is. It's a hard wobbler and it's down low, look at this. It was open for a second. We actually saw it. No flag on the play. No, no ref coming. And Kern County, if you can hear that big R, that big boo, and those East High School coaches all over the refs, it was a dead play from the very beginning once the Liberty players fell on the ball. And out of nowhere comes a Liberty High School player, jumps over the pile, lays some serious leather down, and uh, no call. And I uh, can only say wow. Yeah, I'm a little surprised that, that there wasn't a call as well. No need for that. No, and, and, and you know, that was Jay Williams coming to the pile, and he's done a lot of great things tonight, but that, that's one of the things. That he, that's where you got to control your, your, your body. You don't go around and jump over the pile. And you can expose somebody else to injury and yourself as well. He has to tone that down. Newton. Hands the ball off to Anthony Arnold. As the clock ticks, we get into 3 minutes, 59 seconds. East High School. Trailing by 21 with uh, only four minutes left, and that might seem like a, an obscure fact to bring up, as if it won't matter. Well, when you score 21 points in three in three and a half minutes, who's to uh, who's to think it can't keep happening? I have a, happen to think, Mr. Adams, that we're going to see that clock continue to roll now, and no balls will be put up in the air. Yeah, I, I would think at this point, just run the run the clock out and, and take a 21 point victory, go home with your liberty. Newton hands the ball off to Harnell again. Harnell gets back to the line of scrimmage and uh, looks like we may have a timeout. And it's a timeout. Right, he's he's, 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 he's going to try to put some uh, time on his clock to try to get some more points on the board. Hey, Brian, you and I tonight might have a difficult choice. First of all, the game's not over, but who will be named tonight's Young Woolwich player of the game? Don't give me your answer yet. Let's ponder it. We've had a, uh, an explosion of offense from Liberty High School, but we've also had about five big tackles by our man on the defensive side, um, Basham. Basham, we have, I mean, and, and he's played a stellar game defensively. We, we have uh, 
Montana. Dominic Montana, who started off the game, scored a touchdown, threw a couple touchdowns, controlled the tempo, and got the game off early. But then Henderson comes in, and he lights up the scoreboard running the ball. So there's quite a few players who, who could uh, take that coveted title tonight. TimeWarnerBakersville.com. I spent a lot of time hanging out on that website, whether I'm preparing my recap of the night's game or going to see what's new. One of the coolest websites in town, TimeWarnerBakersville.com. Check it out. Third and 11. Liberty. Newton drops back. They will put the ball in the air, but they run a very smart play, a screen play out to the left here, and it's the big fella, number 80, Richard Ball. Richard Ball. Brings the ball up to the 25-yard line. Excellent play call if you want to put the ball in the air. Yeah, it's a safe pass play. You don't have to really worry about much happening unless he just drops it. And right here, you're going to see Bell get the ball, and he's just going to make a cut back, run through, and does a good job of staying in bounds. doesn't go out of bounds, and that's going to keep the clock running. I think that's big Seth Dameron there trying to drag him down. That just tells you how big... And powerful Richard Ball is 6'1", 200 pounds, and uh, dragging players down the field. So uh, 253 left in the ball game. Liberty continuing to move the ball down the field, regardless of who is on the field. Bumble, though, look at this. Going to be East High. It is. They recover. And this rich history and tradition of all the years, over 60 years of existence at East High School, it continues to churn up good moments for EB. Talk to me, Brian. Man, so what I tell you going to happen with Coach Provencal. He's coming back with those stars. You see Nunez, Ship, Henderson, Acting. Basham. I mean, all those guys are coming back out. So he's not taking any chances on anything happening these last two minutes and 40 seconds. So Jim Maples and his coaching staff love to see something else go up on the scoreboard here. Campus drops back, rolls left, gets a protection, lets one fly, throws it out. It's going to be Gupton, and it's overthrown. Overthrown safely, brings up second and ten. So, as you say, head coach Provencal for Liberty brings on his uh, starting defense. A lot of times the coach, number one, wants to put a stop to all this and also wants to let his guys that uh, maybe second string guys, hey, fellas, if I put you out there, I, I want to think that you're going to uh, close things up for me. Yeah, you, you know, and, and, and to, he just, he has seen 21 points go up on his team in a matter of a few minutes. So he doesn't want to take any chances on the game tonight. Ball goes up the middle. Time keeps ticking. Who will be the young Woolridge player of the game? I know Kevin Burton's waiting down there at the truck, the director of public relations for young Woolridge, our major sponsor and the award presenter. I still don't know who it's going to be. Brian Adams, his brain is still clicking. I confer with him, and we confer with Kevin Burton. Yep. And uh, we'll let you know when we come back from break after this ball game. Two minutes left in the ball game. Head coach Maples content to let the clock run out. His squad put up a valiant effort here at the end. Double reverse. Here comes Gupton. Gupton's going to let it fly. No, he's not. He's going to keep it on the ground. Gupton wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. So. He had some men open here on the left side, but uh, maybe just didn't uh, feel comfortable hurling across the field 50 yards. Yeah, I was with you. I was going to throw it back to King over here and let him just run on the sideline with Matthews blocking. Instead, he stays in bounds. Clock keeps rolling, and uh, I guess when you score three touchdowns in four or five minutes, <laughs> if the well runs dry and you realize it, and it's chilly out here. No more injuries. You don't want any injuries with uh, such little time left, so... Uh, it's fourth and nine for the East High Blades. Unless they pick up the first down, their last play on offense. Campus comes back, throws it across the field. Look out, it's picked off, and uh, look at this, Kern County. Uh, Mike Letourneau, I almost want to say graciously thought about going out of bounds, but uh, thought otherwise and ran enough field in to... Uh, Make it a touchdown for Liberty. So on the last play for East High, they uh, wanted to make something happen. Do we have laundry on the field? Brian Adams, we happen to have a flag at the foot of one of the officials. Here's our interception by Letourneau. He battles off with a stiff arm and uh, takes it in. Who will the call be on? It is on Liberty, but it appears to be 
after the play because the scoreboard still reads that the touchdown was given to them and they are lining up for the PAT, so. Yeah, this is like when they missed doing earlier. They're scoring a touchdown and they're getting unsportsmanlike conduct for plays well after the touchdown. You know, and, and in tonight's game, you're up 41-21, so it's not, uh, it's not a significant difference. When you get in the playoffs, you cannot afford to do those kind of, make those kind of mistakes in a big game in the playoffs. That will come to key. They have to keep the composure and just play good football, score your touchdown, and get off the field. And for what you tell me about your friend, head coach Provencal, this won't be forgotten or looked over. No, I don't think so. BAT is up, and it is good. McAtee makes it through. His legs got to be tired with all the PATs and the kickoffs tonight, and he uh, gets the extended PAT to go through. 49 to 21 is the score. Liberty never really truly in jeopardy tonight, although East did rack up some late points in the ball game. Liberty showing why they're ranked three in the county behind Centennial and Garces, and uh, we look to see Liberty in the playoff picture and i'm sure liberty fans probably say we're, we're probably we're one or two you know just as easily as to be the number three but when you're ranking like that and teams don't play it, it, you know you got to go off of records and, and who you feel plays the better competition don't forget kern county next week we have an exciting night Fight night at the Garden, and it will be televised November 17th and 18th on Channel 21. I'll be your blow-by-blow -blow commentator. World title fight, first time ever in Kern County. It'll be televised November 17th and 18th. I'll be front and center watching the sweet science, Brian. Is the Golden Boy going to be there soon? De La Hoya will be in town for this one. He owns the rights, the promotional rights of Golden Boy Promotions, so uh, don't miss it. Our final edition for 2002, Fight Night at the Garden. A minute four left in this ball game. Kern County, thank you for staying with us tonight. You subscribers, you've got the best in Time Warner Cable. We appreciate you being with us, and we appreciate our sponsors for helping these telecasts get on the air. Low kickoff from McAtee. Uh-oh, bobbled, and it's uh, going to be laid down. And look at this. That's going to draw a flag, and that's just so unnecessary. You got a guy huddled over the ball on the ground and uh, just steamroll into him. All you got to do is tap him on the shoulder and it's over. Here we go, Kern County. Take a look. Right here, he's down. He, you know he's down by contact and he's, he's exposed to injury. You do that, you know, and, and we've seen Ricky play some really great games, but that's a situation right there. You just cannot do that again. You have to play with composure, and I'm sure Coach Provencal is going to be dealing with that on Monday with these unsportsmanlike conducts and these, and these late hits and these plays like this that are really uncharacteristic of this team. And you consider a guy like Ricky Henderson in the running for Young Woolworths player of the game with a minute left has an unnecessary penalty call against him. East High School has the ball back. Another chance to get in the end zone. The pitch goes out to Matthews. Matthews brought down for a loss. He still wants the ball. He's not the kind of kid that wants to sit with a minute left and uh, wait it out. Give me the rock, let me run it. Yeah, and, and all great backs, you know, at this level want the ball. They want to hit that ball 25, 30 times a game. There's your screen. 36 seconds left. Will this be the last play of this ball game? Campus hands it to Matthews. Appropriately enough, Matthews carries the ball on what I believe to be will be the last play of the ball game. Kern County, we want to thank you for being with us. At the conclusion of this game, I'll be down in the field to present the Young Woolworths Player of the Game Award to... We're not going to tell you. You've got to come back. We'll be down in the field. Kern County, there's eight seconds left. The crowd's dissipating. They're going to get one more playoff. Campus behind center. He better call it quickly. He gets it off, hands the ball off to the number two rusher in the state. Matthews, can Matthews get outside? He cannot, he's brought down. That's the final score, Liberty 49, East Side 21. Big game for Liberty. A lot of big plays, some exciting plays. That's your final score. When we come back, I will be presenting the Young Woolridge player of the game. Come back to find out who it is, but right now you're gonna hear from Jesus Shack, KERN 1410, the Real Rock 104.3, and Young Woolridge will give out the award in just a moment. There's your score, 49-21. You're listening and watching Time Warner's High School Game of the Week. I'm Vance Palmer-Bryan, back in a moment.
If you've been to a video rental store lately, you know that DVDs are replacing videotape faster than CDs replaced albums. And now, Time Warner Productions can transfer your own home videos to DVDs. Up to one hour is $29.95, and up to two hours is $39.95. Videotapes can get brittle, sag, fade, or even break. By transferring your videotape to DVD, you are preserving your precious memories. Give us a call at 322-1941 for more information, or simply drop off your tapes in the Time Warner Cable Building. KERN News Talk 1410, Bakersfield's hometown news and talk leader. The station you can trust first for breaking news and the most complete local coverage. We are KERN News Talk 1410, bringing you the pulse of the world 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Make an appointment with KERN News Talk 1410, Bakersfield's hometown news and talk leader. The media has become a staple in our everyday lives, whether it's a song, an advertisement, or even a news story. Everywhere you turn, there's a message in one form or another. Do you realize how much media your child is exposed to every day? And everything your child sees and witnesses affects them. It's time to take action and become involved in what messages your child comes in contact with. Filter out the negativity and let these messages be positive. It's up to us to shape their future. Let it be a happy one. Some things can't be built in a day. Things like honesty, dedication, good hard work, and integrity. Since 1939, the law offices of Young Woodridge has had one of the strongest personal injury teams in the entire Central Valley. Today, that team is stronger than ever before. Through the years, our attorneys have won some of the highest dollar personal injury verdicts in Kern County. Put our experience to work for you. The law offices of Young Woodridge, integrity you can trust. We're concluding here at Wheeler Stadium, home of Permenter Field. We have just witnessed Liberty Patriots go beat the East High Blades 49 to 21. I'm going to send it down to Vance with the Young Woods player of the game, and it's a shock for you this time, fans. Down to you, Vance. Thank you, Brian. Hey, Kern County, down on the field, my favorite part of the program because, of course, it's with our Young Woolridge player of the game. Exciting news tonight, Kern County, the first defensive player of the entire season. In week nine, the first defensive player to win the Young Woolridge player of the game, Jimmy Basham. Jimmy, congratulations. But first of all, let me turn it over to Director of Public Relations for Young Woolridge, Kevin Burton. Hey, thanks, fans. Jimmy, hey, congratulations from the law office of Young Woolridge. Uh, you played a, a great game, and uh, to be our first player of the year uh, in defense of the win this award, uh, I just want to commend you on a on job well done, and um, hope to see you in the, in the future in the playoffs. Take care. Kevin's got the uh, world-famous Time Warner High School Player of the Week t-shirt. You can only have one if you win the award, and also his plaque. Hey, Jimmy, the first defensive player to win this award. Uh, understandably, we have all these offensive juggernauts in Kern County, running backs, quarterbacks, receivers, uh, but you are the uh, epitome of this Liberty defense, tough as nails. Uh, you're throwing quarterbacks for losses before they get rid of the ball. Jimmy, first of all, congratulations. Your thoughts on playing with this tough Liberty defense all season? Um, yeah, we just try to come out strong. Uh, we're kind of scared the number one running back in the valley, so uh, wanted to make sure we wrapped up and uh, didn't try to arm tackle him. Now, on this play here, um, pretty much indicative of you all night long, getting in the backfield before the running back gets to the line of scrimmage, hitting quarterbacks before they, ever, before they even throw the ball. Uh, tell us how much you love playing defense, and what is it about playing D that you love? Well, I like it a lot. Doesn't You can be nasty as you want. You don't really have to go by anything. Um, suits me just fine, I guess. Next week you have Foothill. They haven't won a game, and I know it's easy to look past teams that uh, are like that, but I heard your coach already say, get up for next week. Let's move on to the playoffs, understandably thinking that you get in. Are you guys ready to go? Um, yeah, we're hoping to come out a little bit stronger than we did here. We don't want to let them uh, get one on us because then I'm sure that we'd be out of the playoffs with our record after losing our running back. You're a senior. Last couple games of your high school career. How do you feel about that? Um, I'm just trying to get it done so I can get on to a higher level, hopefully play for a college around here. Well, playing like you did tonight, you're going to do it. Our first defensive player of the, of, of the game for Young Woolworths, congratulations to Jimmy Basham at Liberty. He leads this tough defense. 
Powerful defense. Congratulations, Jimmy. I'm happy for you. Good for you. Hey, Kern County, that's our first defensive winner, Jimmy Basham. I'm Vance Palm alongside Brian Adams up in the booth. All of the crew at Time Warner. Fellas, you did a great job tonight, as always. Next week, guess what? We're going out to the country. We're going out to my country, the Great Vineyards. Shafter at Wasco, always a hard-hitting affair for our final season game for Time Warner's high school football game of the week. Don't miss it. We'll see you next week. Thanks for joining. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Shafter at Wasco. Jimmy, way to go,